killer, 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 killer. Beats in the hood. In the hood. In the hood. Hopefully this one is simply This is your boy N-O-R-E What up is DJ E-F-N And this drink champ Yappy Hour Make, Make some noise <laughs> Now when we started this show We wanted To give props To legends To give flowers To the people Where they can smell them They drinks where they can Inhale them And they thoughts When they can think them When I'm talking about This brother here That we about to introduce I tell you I watch this man Religiously I can hear him talk about anything. He could talk about pink, yellow nails, and I'll still be like, yep, I agree with him. <laughs> he is a wordplay aficionado, a sports aficionado. And I don't, I've always had to ask this question because I don't know how the hell he watches all them goddamn games <laughs> <laughs> and comments on them all. That's right. Some people call him a cowboy hater. And some people say he's accurate about the Cowboys. <laughs> and the Cowboys are the haters. <laughs> he's from my barrel, even though when, when I Googled him, they said he was born in Brooklyn, so I got to ask that. But he, he's Hollis Queens. One of the best, if not the best, sports people, period. I hate when hip-hop use this term, GOAT. But in this case, it's an understatement. He's a man's man. And I, can't, I was so excited. I've been sweating all day. <laughs> so in case you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about the one, only, legendary, impeccable Stevie A. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Now, now, What's now, up, baby? Now, 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 look. I couldn't wait for this. Yeah, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait either. Oh, by the way, I want you to pick wait. my drink. I, 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 I'm going to drink champagne in between, but either Japanese whiskey or... Uh, or vodka, Stoli Elite. No, what you want me to have? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So that's something Thank I so always much. wanted to ask you. Yeah, I, man. I, you know, wake up every morning, we see you, but you you're, you're at the games. Yep. But then you still know about the games that you're not at. Right. How do you? How do you do that? That's well, like some well, superhero shit. Well, I don't. <clears throat> I don't just, you know, do my job. Mm -hmm. I live it. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is that, like, if you walk into the basement of my house, mm -hmm. and by the way, I was born in the Bronx, mm -hmm. the Bronx raised okay. in Hollis, Queens, since I was one years old. Oh, okay, okay. All right, okay. so just to correct, just okay. get that out the way. But when I go in the basement, if you see my basement, right. I've got a movie theater. Mm -hmm. I've got two television screens here. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to the side, I and mean, that's really my man cave, I got a bar, a TV over the bar, right. and I got six TVs, three on top of the right. other, that I can turn into one, or I can turn into six, seven, six different games at a time. Wow. So let's say, for example, it's Sunday football. Uh -huh. If there's seven football games on, right. in that man cave, I got a game on each TV. The, sit, the one on the wall over the bar plus the seven. Wow. You know, I can say it now because I'm, yeah. I'm about to move in a little while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but what I'm saying is mm -hmm. it's a minimum of seven games that I can watch right. at one time. Right. And so I'm doing that. But when I say I live it, right. okay, we, we talk in sports. Right. So when I'm driving... I'm on. Listen. I'm listening to the sports okay. channel. When AM I'm radio? home, AM radio? I'm watching. When I'm watching the sports, okay. Okay. I'm watching the sports channel. Mm -hmm. When I am, I'm reading. I wake up and I, mm -hmm. I. The first thing that I do, you know, in terms of my work, right. when I get up in the morning, I go to ESPN.com, right. Yahoo Sports. Right. You know, I'm looking at 
all the competitors and seeing what the story is. Because you got to remember, I have a journalistic background. I started off in New York Daily News. Mm -hmm. right. I went from there to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Right. And then after that, I did CNN SI while I was at the Philadelphia Inquirer, then Fox Sports, and then ultimately C wow. um, ESPN. Wow. This is all while I was doing newspaper from the Philadelphia Inquirer from 1994 to 2010. Right. And so I have a journalistic career that spans 30 years. Right. And when you wake up as a journalist, you're thinking about what's the story that people that's percolating with right. the people today. Right. In my case now, because of television, podcasting, radio, et cetera, what are the multitude of stories right. that are percolating today? Y'all right. just finished talking about right. Drake, Kendrick, yeah. and, you know, and J. Yeah. Cole and yeah. all of them, right? Yeah. Well, why you talk about them? Because right. they made the news. Right. What you did right. that day, we right. have to do as journalists every day. Every day. Right. So I'm... Um, I'm trained automatically. And accurately. That's right. <laughs> and I'm trained, but I'm just talking about the storyline. Right. What are people talking about? You literally are supposed to wake up every day thinking about what's percolating. Right. Right. And that's how I approach every single day. So let me ask you, right? Yeah. By the way, let's make some noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dedication. So let me ask you, coming up from the inner city, yep. we had sports like um, football. Uh, uh, stick ball yep. used to play handball Definitely all stick that ball. hopscotch as, all that shit as, yeah. as, when you say you do that handball <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it with, that's it with the sisters and all of that stuff when they playing hopscotch that's like, oh, you, okay, you try to play dutch. you try to play that just to do double dutch <laughs> yeah, yeah. you try to play it just because you wanted to be around yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so how is it I was just, that's that's the that's the sports that we know that the streets come from right, right. but then you got to cover golf right you got to cover soccer which right. <sighs> I'm finally, it's hard. I'm finally coming around to liking right. soccer. Right. I'm finally coming around because I right. like Christian Ronaldo's watch right. collection and right. Messi's watch collection. So I just figured if I'm, I'm that's what brought you on. But right. that's not the, that's not the, yeah. <laughs> right. But that's not like the sports that we know. Like, and then later on in life, mm -hmm. you got all these people playing golf. Right. But then 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 a, a lot of them equate, equated to being rich. Like a, like this is a rich sport, right? Right. How do you how do you how do you cover that with the same Emotions in the same You don't interest. You don't you, you, you don't really um, Wow See here's what happens <clears throat> With With basketball mm -hmm. I'm a specialist Because mm. right. I'm an insider right. right It's not that I know More Even though I kind of do right. It's not really about You knowing more Basketball Than other people Because you right. never know More than the players You never know right. more Than the coaches right. You never know more Than them right. But it's about Being so connected To the sport Because you've Covered it intimately That most things You read about Right I already knew about. Okay. I didn't say anything about. Okay. I picked up the phone and talked to sources directly involved in those stories, right. and you got inside intel. The intricacies so when I say, it, so right. when I say I'm a specialist right. in basketball, I'm telling you, like you know, you can see a controversy with a player, and I ain't say a word. Right. But I know everything about it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And right. That, that, that most folks wouldn't know. Just like y'all with the hip hop industry, you right. know shit that a lot right. of people would, you know, they got to, you, you got to read a whole bunch of magazines right. and right. hear people talking right. about it and all of this other stuff. But you already know, that's me on basketball. Right. right. The other sports, until the last few years, you're just being a reporter. And what I mean by that is you're recognizing what the story is. Like, I didn't have to cover golf. Right. We have golf writers to cover Tiger and stuff like that. Right. But when his ass got in trouble oh, and yeah. the wife attacked him in Orlando. Oh, yeah. And he was ending up with a police blotter. Said, no, 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 no. That's the story. Right. So all of a sudden, it's the story. And as a journalist, you're trained to pursue the story. story. So you can find out about the story without having to be an insider on the sport of golf. All right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what you're doing with most sports. Right. You're covering it. Right. You know, you're at the press, you're, you're in the press box, you get access into the locker room, you go, you cover a game, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. The difference between that and basketball, you know, Allen Iverson and Larry Brown getting into it. Right. Well, y'all reading about it. Right, right. I'm the one right. they talk to. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, so something, something happened with Shaq and Kobe, mm -hmm. and you know, y'all read about it weeks later, but you know, it was Kobe that that, that motherfucker. You know, he going off and shit, right. you know what I'm saying? On the phone, weeks earlier, mm -hmm. Shaq like hell with him, done with right. him, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You get access that most folks don't get. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes you a specialist at that particular sport because you have intel and inside info that most people don't have. Now, with that being said, with the inside info, yeah. I seen you the other day. Yep. 
you were talking about Michael Jordan. Yes, sir. And you said that Michael Jordan texted you and said that uh, Magic Johnson was one of the greatest guards of all time. Right. Because I think you said someone else. I, I didn't say he, I didn't say oh. he texted me. Okay. I said he called me. He called. Oh, okay, okay. Listen, so. motherfucker, I'm tired of you not listening to me. You better listen to me. You know what I said? You said, what the hell are you talking about? You know, it's a different Johnson. conversation. And, I, and I'm like, Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 look, it, it, it's kind of hard to argue with the goat, you know what I'm saying? Because he would know. So, so wanna, but we do. We do argue. I yeah. want to ask you this. Right. That was a flex. How do you right? know? Yeah, it's a super flex. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even yeah, going yeah, yeah. further to, to more of the flex. Right. How do you know which conversations to, to, to make public and which conversations you got to say, damn, like you said, y'all argue they, they, a lot. They allow me to. Okay. So um, I, I don't, do they say that? They, this is off the record? Absolutely. They say off the record. They say okay. off the record, right. it's off the record. Okay. They Ooh. say it's on the record, it's on the record. Or if they don't tell you, you're able to defer to their previous course. Like if right. I've seen you say something on the subject publicly right. already, right. then it's okay for me to say it because you've already spoke on it publicly right. and you're just echoing those sentiments to me directly. Right. If it's sentiments that you made to me that you didn't make to anybody, that's not a trust that you violate. That's the code of the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, you know where we come from and so you don't, mm -hmm. you just don't do that. You don't, right. you don't do something like that and a lot of times when you got cats and they being ultra sensitive or whatever, I have no patience for it right. because my attitude is, okay, if you say it's off the record, it's off the record. You know that trust ain't gonna be violated. Right. So if you know that's not gonna be violated, and we just talk and be real and authentic with it. Right. And if you and if you if if you don't if you want to say something publicly, then that's cool. Then own it and be cool with it. Mm -hmm. As long as I quote you accurately and I put it in this proper context, and I didn't violate your trust, what are you bitching about? Right. You got an opinion. Right. I got opinion, probably laced with more facts, right. and we'll go from there. And I'm not gonna worry about. That. I'm not gonna worry about feelings on that level because again, it's not personal. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? When you when you, I don't care who you are, and it's not about fear. It's not about embarrassment. It's not about anything. It's a code where there's certain things that you just supposed to know. Right. You don't reveal. Right. You don't get personal. Right. But professionally. Mm -hmm. It's all it's all open season. Especially if you step on public a, information. Step on a court, you yeah. shoot two for twenty. Don't yeah. bitch to me. Right. You shot two for twenty right. in front of everybody. You do it in your backyard. <laughs> you did it in front of everybody. Right. You, everybody saw it. Right. So that particular night, you stuck up the joint. Right. Own it. Right. You know, don't get mad because somebody did their job and they highlighted. This was not a good night for you. Right. You can't get mad at that, but you right. got some of these cats who will because of the age that we're living in, and it's unfortunate in that regard. But it is what it is. Like, um, I had to speak to DJ Envy one time because mm -hmm. DJ Envy was, 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 was going back and forth with somebody. Um, and I had to kind of like let him know, like, your voice is powerful. Mm -hmm. It was playing around, but they wasn't right. playing around. Your voice, but I sure. think your voice is powerful. Sure. Because when you do a show like a Breakfast Club, yep. it, um, it comes on in other markets at different times. Sure. So if you did somebody at 8 o'clock, yeah. You might have to like go see, see him again at ten o'clock. Yeah. Right. See him again at twelve o'clock. Right. Have it has 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 it ever been like that for you? Because if you like you said you you All the you, time. you 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 critique on the game and yeah. some of these people are your connects. Well, first of all, let's understand that about the connect. Mm -hmm. You cultivate relationships with people. Mm -hmm. Here's how I cultivate relationships. Mm -hmm. This is who the hell I am. Mm -hmm. Off top. Let's right. get that out the way. This is my job. Your personal yes. life right. is your business. Right. It is your story to tell. Right. Don't end up in the police blotters now. Right. That's a matter of right. public, public. public information. Right. 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 You're saying privately, right. what's going on in your life right. is your business. Right. Your professional career is there for me to chronicle. Right. I'm going to call it like I see it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to come to you now. If I got access to you, right. like, you know, you'll see me and there's certain people that I'm straight and I can be hardcore with. And then there's certain people you look at me and say, damn, I expected Stephen A to go harder. They're not realizing it's not because of friendship. Mm -hmm. It's because you stood there and talked to me and gave me your perspective. Mm -hmm. If this, if the drink champs mm -hmm. create headlines mm -hmm. and it's for a negative reason, right? right. If I know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened? Because right, you have the right. access. So, so right. you're giving me a perspective. I've heard the perspective from you. Right. And at that time, there's some things you might say to me, it's cool to tell. Right. And then you might give me even more intel, but say, don't go there with that because right. I can't do that because if you do that, that's going to burn somebody and I don't need that information. Isn't now, that the better the, way to go? It's to tell you? Right. Like, isn't that the better way? And, and, some, and, and most of them usually do. I'm right. simply making the point mm -hmm. that if I have a relationship with you and you talk to me, I have 
a professional obligation before we even get to the human part. Right. Us knowing one another, communicating with one another, you talking to me. Before we even get to that, right. I have a professional obligation yep. to make sure that I honor what the conversation is. Meaning, if you tell me it's off the record, it's off the record. Right. Right. If, you, if, you, if you've given me intel and you say, this is the context I'm coming from, right. that's cool. You'll see me on TV and plenty of times I'll tell somebody I disagree with them. But I'll stop and say, let me tell you where they are coming from. Right. Okay. Because what I owe to you is to make sure that I project and disseminate the information to go to the masses in the context that you want it. Right. Whether I agree or disagree. Right. Now, I always tell them, I ain't under no obligation to agree with your ass now. You understand that? I mean, I might agree with you. I might not agree with you. But before I do anything, I'm going to make sure that I'm fair. And I'm going to make sure that I project the information in a fashion that you gave it to me. If you want to be one of those cats that's inaccessible, you want to hate on me, you want to avoid me, that's at your own damn peril. That ain't my problem. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing about me. Please understand this. I've kept my number the same for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My number, my phone number, mm-hmm. has been the same for 20 years. Mm-hmm. I haven't changed it for one reason and one reason only. Right. I want no excuses right. about you couldn't reach me. Impossible. Right. Impossible. Right. Too many people know me <laughs> for you to tell me you couldn't reach me. But you do have some people who believe they so big that they untouchable. And I don't know why people would think that way because in this industry, mm-hmm. I can touch you right. any damn time I want. Mm. Right. And it's just that simple. And I'm going to be as fair and as humane and as authentic as I can possibly be. But please trust, I'm going to do my damn job. We don't have to have Christmas, Thanksgiving dinner together. Right. We don't have to exchange Christmas gifts. I'm going to do my job right. because I answer to the public Mm-hmm. I don't answer to the people I cover so long as I'm fair, mm-hmm. as fair-minded as I can possibly be, and I, and I contextualize this stuff in the fashion that is accurate. That is what I owe folks. I don't owe them more than that. But that, that, goes, you, that goes without saying, but I feel like you said the landscape is different now. People well, might need you to explain those rules. They well, don't deserve it necessarily, it, but it, it, it the, seems like the landscape is changed. And I would say to you that you're putting it in a very, very nice way. Right. Mm-hmm. Some people just soft as hell mentally. Right, right. <laughs> We're going to call it like it is. <laughs> this, there's a generation out here that's soft as hell mentally. And you know, you got a lot of people, and they'll be like, man, you know, some people, you know, you cool with some people, but some people can't stand your ass. And I'm like... Who the hell told you I could stand them? <laughs> they don't like their asses either. Some of them, not most, mm-hmm. not all. It's a lot of cats in professional sports. Listen, first take on ESPN has been number one for 12 years. Okay. Right. Every week, every week, mm-hmm. every month, every year, mm-hmm. 12 years and counting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'd like people to do? How many athletes you see coming on there? How many former athletes you see got a job on there? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How many cats you see being given shine? Who you mm-hmm. think they come to? I'm the executive producer first take. You ain't coming on without my permission. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm the one that puts them on. Now, I'm blessed and fortunate enough to have accomplished what I have accomplished in my career at ESPN to be able to have that kind of time, that kind of power and knock on wood. That's the day. It could be going tomorrow. I, right. don't, I don't trust corporate America. Anything could happen. Right, right. But what I'm saying is I have, I have that now. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it's like, wait a minute. You're letting cats know. You want you want to talk? You want your perspective heard? You 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 want to make sure that you're gonna have viewers listen, et cetera, et cetera. The platform is here available to you. You got a lot of cats don't want that mm. because they got their own platforms. Mm. They think they doing you a favor by coming by, not recognize you was number one before they arrived. You're gonna be number one <laughs> when they go on. Yeah, they ain't doing all of that. <laughs> they think about they they're thinking about what you have to gain, or more importantly, what they may have to lose by being in an environment. It's unedited and it's live. Right. Ain't no tape delay. Yeah. Ain't no it ain't no live later, to right. tape and right. airing later. Right. Oh no, 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 bro. When we on ten o'clock, it's ten o'clock. Oh wow. I didn't know it's that. Live. I didn't it's know live. It's okay. live. It ain't taped. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So when you come on live, and that's what I tell them. It's the live platform. You can go on Sports Center. You could do an interview for three or four minutes. Mm-hmm. They could come and interview you and they could air three or four minutes. You come on first take. If I tell you you coming on for 15 minutes, it's 15 minutes. Right. If I tell you it's 13 minutes and 15 seconds, it's 13 right. minutes and 15 <laughs> seconds. Right. You know, so you have that. And if you want to pass up on that because 
you don't trust or you think you're too big or right. you thinking that your influence because of your reach, your followers and all of that stuff is going to stop me from doing what I do. Well, good luck with that. Mm. Right. Good luck with that. Recently, we had people come on here, right? You know, have a good time, say something they don't want, they don't want to say, mm -hmm. and ask for us to edit it. Right. And us being good people, we, we don't count yes. right. count chase. Right. But then these artists will ask us to edit, and then go on another platform. And say what they told us. That, that, that should piss you off. That should piss yeah. you off. You know what you should do? <laughs> I'll be wanting to blow it up. But you I, know what you should do? <laughs> you should be like this. this I'm going to blow it up this, right now. But this is, I, 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 I will tell you this. I want to hear his advice. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me allow me to give you some advice. Y'all listen. Eight years. Congratulations. Listen, eight years. Congratulations. Eight years. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well deserved. But let me get as a person that's been in media for thirty years. Let me give you a piece of advice, please. So you want me to cut this out? You don't want me to air this? You know I better not see you saying this shit nowhere else, right? I didn't say that. You know that, right? All right. Because if I see it anywhere else, <laughs> I'm going to air it. Do you understand me? So long as you know. I ain't got no problems cutting this out. Right. Especially if it's something that you think is going to compromise you, going to hurt your brand. Well, I ain't trying to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I better not see it somewhere else. Because if I see it somewhere else, oh, that just means you want to give that to somebody else other than right. me. Right. But I got it already. I'll hear that shit tomorrow. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And put the date when you said it so everybody <laughs> know I had it first. <laughs> Don't play that game. Well, Don't play that game. That if you say you want it out, <laughs> keep it out. Because, listen, there's certain things, you know, a code of the industry, it's like, you don't give somebody else editorial power. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've had politicians. I've had, you know, uh, big time executives. I've had various others mm -hmm. wanting to sit down and do interviews with me. And I'd cancel the interview because they wanted editorial right. control. You're not mm -hmm. getting editorial control of my content. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't come on and give me the content. I came on here today. I told y'all y'all could ask me yep. anything y'all want. That don't yep. mean I'm going to answer every right. damn thing. Right. Right. But right. let me assure you, <laughs> what you won't hear from right. me is me saying, please don't, please right. edit that out. Right. Right. No, 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 no. I came here. I showed up. Yep. I know you got critics and people going to say I'm going to get asked. Tough I know how y'all roll. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I, I, I knew what I was showing up for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you got these cats and they being run mm -hmm. by their team. Right. But they want to act like they it. Yep. And they being run by their team and their team didn't have any connection. They ain't create no kind of vibe. They ain't talk to you yep. man to man, one on one or whatever the case may be. And then they walk around with their back up like somebody did them wrong. Right. Instead of owning what the hell they did. They did right. That's my life. Right, right there. Right. Where it's like I'm constantly the villain and I cannot tell y'all how many times, whether it's y'all, mm -hmm. I don't give a damn what podcast, what show it is. I'll see some people say some shit. Mm -hmm. It could be on YouTube. It could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. And my name come up. Mm -hmm. And they say something. And I'm like, how come nobody asked? Mm -hmm. Would they say that to my face? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would they put their truth Mm -hmm. up against my truth mm -hmm. because we all got receipts mm -hmm. but very very few people got as many as me <laughs> and so I'm like what when I see people I'm watching mm -hmm. because if it's sports related especially when they talk about sports commentators and stuff like that my name coming up I'm like okay and I'm wondering whether that person's gonna call me or yo Stephen A mm -hmm. yo man they said something. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I'll have an answer. All right. mm -hmm. I promise you that. All right. But I rarely get that opportunity. Okay. And it's it's all right. But it but sometimes I, I, I say people say say stuff because they know they could get away with it. All right. They know they could get away with it. But but your name is so big, yep. I can see why certain people want to say your name. I can mm -hmm. see why because it's, it's, it's a clickbait even if they're not trying it for it to be clickbait. That's true. Because someone say, ah, I'm talking about Stephen A. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna click on it. That's right. Your name is a hot commodity. Yeah. So um, is that something that bothers you when you don't get that call? When I don't get that yeah. call? Sometimes. Especially if it's it, personal. It depends on the shit they saying. Okay. And how personal it gets. Okay. Because I, I, would, I would, listen, <clears throat> I know what codes I live by. Mm -hmm. I know... 
if you a player and you didn't get along with the coach, it was right. because y'all were y'all were y'all were doing the same woman. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, or you screwing around with a teammate's right. girl or a teammate's wife. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you got into this beef mm-hmm. because you know, you tried to choke a coach or something. You know, you got Trails it. Trails well. You got, you got well. well, that that that's the trails me well. But you know, depending on rumors, think about it. you hear about it's, that stuff it's, every it's, year. It's every more. year, right? So you got all types of the kind of stuff that I get access to. The kind of information that I get access to by virtue of what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. I promise you, I don't say seventy percent of the stuff that I know. Wow, seventy right. percent. And so what happens is when you see cats and 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 you know they talking about your stuff like that, I will remind you, I've been in the business for 30 years. Right. I know about dudes who were talking about me right. and they were filming a commercial in the off season in Hollywood not realizing I knew the damn producers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you 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 connecting with, 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 with cats in the hip hop industry, you don't know I know them. Right. It's your network. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. don't don't listen. I'm not the expert, the aficionado mm-hmm. at that. Like, I, I like music. Of course mm-hmm. I did. I grew up I'm a product of the hip hop generation right. growing up in Hollis, Queens. Right. Cool. Jam Master J was, was best Rest friends with my late brother, right. God rest oh, his wow. soul. Wow. I grew up with Run DMC. Wow. That's why they see me. What do you say? I Hollis. 50 right. Cent was, right. was, 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 you know, mm-hmm. down the block. Mm-hmm. LL Cool J yeah. grew up five minutes from me on Farmers Boulevard. Farmers Boulevard. Boulevard. The, the Rock. The Rock. The, the you know, Ja right, Rule, yeah. 50, yeah. all of these. I mean, I'm like, who you talking to? Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm seeing, I, I've seen these people for years. I root for them all day, every day. I'm proud of them because I look at the road traveled. Right. And I know where they came from to get to where they go. They always going to have my support. I don't give a damn right. who it is. My man Kaiser should have yeah, called yeah, yeah. That's my, my man. That's, that's my, my man. Years. Yeah. Years. Yeah. You know, I just got on with Snoop because right. I told him, damn, I said I had to prepare for the interview. I was watching <laughs> you with Drink Chat. Shit, I can't, I can't eclipse what you did. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, the, these, these are my brothers. Right. right. They know. You pick up the phone, Stephen A. Is what? What you need? Done. That's you know. I'm in, I'm incredibly grateful and humbled and thankful that I got relationships with such iconic figures. Right. You can't have relationships with those with cats like that if you don't live by a code. Right. right. And you don't stand for shit. And and you gonna betray people. And, and you gonna backstab. You can't do that. So when you got cats in the sports world. Trying to besmirch and and sully my reputation, mm-hmm. that gets me hot mm-hmm. because you're implying that I live by a code that anybody who knows me knows I do not live right. by. Uh-huh. And so what happens is then I'm watching everybody because I will watch whether it's y'all or somebody else, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, you 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 just gonna let them say that? Right, you're gonna let that slide. You, know, you, you gonna let that slide? Uh-huh. What what evidence do you have to say that shit about me? Right, you know, and we gotta remember, I know of athletes. They were main nameless, mm-hmm. yeah. but I know of stars mm-hmm. that spoke to executives trying to keep me out of the business. Oh wow, oh, damn! Trying to get me fired. Wow, trying to trying to deny. What I'm bringing, and then come and they won't say anything. I'm not gonna accuse them of smiling in my face because right. they ain't that flagrant with it. Right. But they don't know that I know. Like mm-hmm. I told you before, mm-hmm. you filming a commercial, you hanging out with your boys, you mm-hmm. might be in a hotel, you might be at a party or whatever. Yo, bro, you ain't been. I've been in this business for 30 years. Right. I kind of know people. Right. So. It could be a week later. It could be a month later. It could be that night. It's going to get back to me. And it ain't going to get back to me from naysayers that's, Mm -hmm. you know, I barely know. I'm talking about people that I know whose words I know I can trust. Yo, Stephen A., bro, that ain't no friend. Mm. Uh, This is what he's saying about you. This is what they trying to do. This is what happened. And so I just sit back and I watch and I pray, pray that they say something about me by name. Oh, you don't know how I be praying for it. Because again, I can unleash at my discretion. Right. At any moment, if, and I, and I'm mostly reserved, Mm -hmm. no doubt, 
because I'm in corporate America and I right. grew up in corporate America. The right. freedom that y'all have mm. in this in, in, in this podcast world, mm. that's something I just adopted. I never had the Stephen A. Smith show on YouTube. Yeah. That just started a year ago. Yeah. I, I don't, I you know, I wasn't doing that all of these that, years. Right. I wasn't, I said, what? Congrats Thank on you. That, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't do, you know, I just started doing that. Mm. And I didn't, do, you know, you could call it a podcast because I got to deal with iHeartRadio mm. and they're going to push that yeah. on their platforms. Right. But, out of my own pocket, I built a television studio. Wow. Because my God, I came I came a couple mil out of my own pocket. I built this television studio because A, I want to show that I can produce television on my own. Mm. Whereas I'm not getting a check as an employee, I'm getting a check as a production company because I'm producing content and I'm getting that bag too on top of me mm. being the talent. Mm. Oh, by the way, not only am I doing that, I own and operate it 100%. Oh, by the way, not only am I doing that, but I'm doing it with the purpose of not just myself, but looking for young talent on the come right. up that I can produce years and years to come because I'm 56. Mm. I ain't 26. I don't want to do this shit in 30 years. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want, I, I, I want, and I want my legacy to be somebody that's reaching out to help those on the come up so we can find we can find a way to establish because everybody can't be you. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be you. Everybody can't be me. Mm -hmm. But they can be themselves in a fashion right. that's most profitable for them. Show them the way. Mm -hmm. And show them there's an. I'm not. I'm in. I'm corporate because I had to live in corporate America for 30 years. I right. know who I am. Right. You understand? I know what I am when I take the suit off and I'm hanging in Hollis. Right. You understand? So I'm right. hanging with the fellas or right. something like that. Right. Right. But you can't roll up with Bob Iger, the CEO of Walt right. Disney, and Jimmy Pataro, the president of ESPN, and Roger Goodell, the NFL right. commissioner, Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner. Right. You know. Like you with the fellas, right. it calls for something different. Do you have the flexibility, the skill, the know-how, the professionalism to be able to dance in that world when you're not mm -hmm. you or you or right. me? And I'm the kind of person that thinks that I could help in showing the way so that versatility kicks in and you can show yourself to be marketable to a whole bunch of people. People a lot of times don't see that. We encouraging young cats, man, do what you want to do, when you want to do, how you want to do it, fuck everybody else, but you got your hand out for somebody right. else's money. And right. that pisses me off because I'm like, yo, you don't have to be a business owner. Tell me, even if you were on the street hanging with your boys, if your boys came to you and said, yo, dog, I need some money, you might give it to him the first time. Right. Second time, you're going to be like, what the fuck you need it for? Right. Mm -hmm. Third time, again? Again. Why? You understand what I'm saying? And you're going to want to know what they're doing with it. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. But we act like we can encourage people to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it, when they got their hand out for somebody else's money. Mm -hmm. You're setting them up for a dead-end ride. They're going to fall. Yep. You can't operate that way. I'm the kind of person that says that. Right. And because I say that, you got people that snub their nose up, they get their back up, they got an attitude, all of this other stuff. And I don't have patience for that because I'm like, yo, I'm trying to help cats. Right. What you trying to do when you leading them down a dead-end a dead road? Right. Like like me, right? Um, I did Love & Hip Hop, right? Which is Viacom, which is yep. corporate America. Yep. I did it uh, because I enjoyed working for somebody. Right. I enjoyed it. I already know I'm the boss of whatever, whatever, right. whatever, right. my world. Right. But I wanted to go into somebody else's world that... I could be accountable for, for, for not being on time. Right. I could be accountable for not showing right. up or things like that. And I enjoyed it. Yeah. I fully enjoyed it. They, 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 they didn't want to keep paying me because I wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we, exactly. we agreed right. to disagree. Right. But at times, I always say that. I, 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 I'm, I'm good with you know, doing what I got to do. And then if I have to work for somebody else, I'm okay with it. Right. I know who I am in real life. So is that how you feel when it comes to um, that, that, first take? Yeah, I, I, even though you've been I wouldn't say when it comes to first take, you know, because my weakness is I hate getting up in the morning. Because once I'm up, I'm up. I don't take naps and I stay up real late. I don't go to sleep before 2 a.m. Wow. And so because of that, I'm up constantly, you know, wow. and, and, and I'm on my grind. I can't stand getting up early. Right. That's the only hiccup in my entire career. I'll turn down millions if you ask me to get up at 4 or 5 a.m. The hell with it. I, I got to figure out something else. You know, that's how I am. And that's been my week. That's my, been my one weakness throughout my career and throughout my life. But I will tell you this. I've often said this about working for Disney. Mm -hmm. It ain't perfect. Right. 
damn, it could be hard sometimes because they got shareholders, stockholders, all mm-hmm. of that stuff. And you got to answer for that. And when you a major player, somebody that moves the needle and, mm-hmm. you know, God has blessed me. I've been number one for them for like eight, nine years on that level in terms of moving the needle. Here's the deal. I've often said this. I'd rather work for someone with standards than someone looking for them. Mm. Wow. I can always make the adjustment mm-hmm. to being free and easy and not having to answer to anybody. Mm-hmm. But if I had never had to answer to anybody, right. and then all of a sudden I got to work for somebody right. and work in corporate America, I'm a lost soul. Right. I ain't gonna know how to adjust. I'm not gonna know how to live that life. It's gonna drive me crazy. But the fact that I have worked for the New York Daily News, for the Philadelphia Inquirer, for CNN, mm-hmm. Fox Sports, ultimately ESPN and Walt Disney, right? Because of that, especially Walt Disney over the last 20 years, mm-hmm. I'm in a position where I've seen so much corporate right. and how strict it can be right. and how paralyzing at times it can be right. that I can adjust to anything. Right. right you because it out. ain't going to be much tougher than that right. in terms of the standard, mm-hmm. right? Everything's going to be a little looser. Right. And right. as a result, I'm going to feel more free no matter where you put me. Right. And that gives me a decisive advantage moving forward because I played the long game. That Not makes sure sense. Game. That makes do, sense. Do you, when you uh, 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 first take, but then when you um, uh, uh, do Stephen A show, yep. you're the boss boss. Yes, I'm the boss boss. So, does it, is it is it is it more hard to deal with employees? Hell yeah! Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god! Let me tell you something, man. That was the best. I mean, being an employer is not easy. easy. Look, man. Look, look, look. When people work for you, Uh when you're working for somebody, you have a standard you're determined to meet. Mm. Now you got to. When you're the boss. You have a standard you're praying everyone else right. will meet. Right. And most people ain't you. Right. Right. And so as a result, you know, on one, and not only that, here's the thing. On one hand, you, the priority has to be competence. Mm-hmm. Your ability, you got your crew here. They got to know what the hell they doing. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? You right. see them, they got smiles on their faces because yep. they know how to do their damn job. Yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? That's so right. they good because they know right. you that's believe right. they good. That's right. And that's all right. right. Okay? So the competence is number one. Mm-hmm. But right there mm-hmm. is trust. Right. Now, trust comes in a variety of ways. Right. You don't want people telling your business, but then again, when you ain't got much to hide, you don't care about that. Right. But the other part of trusting is being able to close your eyes and turn your back and know that the standard that you've mandated exactly. is being met at all times because you got folks that are that committed. Right. And when there's a question mark to that, right. that could be very, very stressful. Right. I'm doing the Stephen A. Smith show on YouTube, right? Mm. I got 600,000 followers. I'll probably hit 600,000 subscribers tomorrow, mm-hmm. right, in year one. That's not bad. It's pretty no, damn great. good. No, that's, that's great. great. I'm picking up about 1,500 subscribers a day. That's great. I ain't satisfied. Why? I think it should be better. Right. But I got people around me. Man, we doing well. And I'm looking at them. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know why I'm looking at them? God damn it, you don't set the standard. Mm. I set the standard. I'm the one cutting this check. Right. Mm. Well, tell me what we doing. Now, if I'm unreasonable, mm-hmm. that's different. Mm-hmm. But don't you dare tell me what we doing as if you're the one who's defining the standard. And let me give a sports analogy to you that I'm going to give it to you because you'll no, love this. I'm in it. I'm a diehard Knicks fan. We all know that. Yeah, it's, it's hard being a Knicks fan. I know. It's hard. But no, 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 no. Throughout the years. Not throughout now. the years. The years. I mean, uh, the, oh, the totality of being a Knicks listen, fan. Not it's, right it's now. So, it was so hard being a Knicks fan. <laughs> it was hard for me to look at that damn Jim Dolan. You know, I walk by him. Now, he's a billionaire now. Yeah. He's a billionaire now. Yeah. And I walk by him. I think it's hard for him. How you doing? Too. He's oh, no, no, he sees me. He said, Hi, Steven. Yeah, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? We, we, we all angry. Because, because, because Devin has missed since 1999. Yeah, 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 this is 1999, yeah, yeah. Devin. Yeah. Can't get to finals, please? Yeah. Please, with sugar on top? But this 
last year. I think they had a chance, but they had too many damn injuries. But we'll see what happens since they got OG number one defensive efficiency, all of this other stuff. But we'll talk about that. We're doing better than so, the Heat. No, 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 no. I want the Heat again. I actually want the We're Heat again. We're doing better than the if Heat. If they're healthy. If they're healthy. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, listen, listen. No, no one thing. As an aside, as an aside, no one thing about me. Mm-hmm. I am never losing mm-hmm. when the Heat are playing. Because because that means I, I get to come to South Beach. Oh, you get to come to South Beach. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The difference between right. Heat fans mm-hmm. and Nick fans. Heat fans don't even sit down in their seats. They back there and club live, drinking. Nick, I remember going to a LeBron game. Mm-hmm. Halftime came. LeBron was losing. The whole Heat left. Yeah. The, the whole was, stadium was, was left. Like, and I, I remember being the diehard Nick fan saying yeah. that would never happen. That's true. We do not leave. That's true. But here's the flip side. Sorry. You, you could be at a Knicks game. I'm sorry, you could be at a Heat game. And if you're not from Miami, and you know anything about Miami, <laughs> you get there early just for the view. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it is yes. spectacular. It's, it's, it's a great stadium. Great. Yeah. They got a real that club too, in the that, back. That, like, too, this, I was there. That, 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 Full for that club. Listen, I'm like, listen. Oh shit! It's the only time. It's, it, listen, I told motherfuckers going in just for the club. Miami, <laughs> Miami is the only time in my life. Mm-hmm. Where I sound like Sammy Sosa. Right. Miami has been very, very good to me. <laughs> very, very good to me. It's the only time I sound like Sammy Sosa. You know what I'm saying? I don't need no damn interpreter, okay? But, but, but it is what it is. But I say all of that to say, you know, using the whole Knicks thing or anything like that mm-hmm. as an example, okay? You've got a situation where mm-hmm. they improved. Yeah. They doing their thing. And folks are salivating over what they seeing. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. We're just doing better. We're not right. doing great. We're doing better. And I'm going like this. Okay. Do we have a chance to go to the finals or not? Mm. Because that's how I'm looking at it. Right. Like, Mitchell Robinson, you're going to get healthy. OG Anna, no, but you're going to get healthy. Julius Randle, you're going to get healthy. Jalen Brunson balling. Somebody going to give him some help? Yeah. Because I'm looking at the Boston Celtics. And I'm saying, that should be the only team standing in your way right now. Milwaukee with Dame Dollar and Giannis can't be ignored. We get all of that. But losing Drew Holiday and stuff like that, you compromise defensively. New York Knicks got a chance. Right. Boston is the one roadblock standing in your face. To me, yes. anything I, I, other than a trip to the conference finals, if you're healthy, mm-hmm. against Boston is a failure. Anything less than that is a failure. So when I see folks like, man, we 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 doing all right. Mm-hmm. I'm like talking about Knicks. Yeah, I'm and like they, this. They so, and, and, and I'm going like this. Uh, is your ass from New York? Have you have you suffered since 1973? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm like because I want you out. I want you out of here. I, you ain't a part of this culture. You see what I'm saying? You ain't a part of this because they don't know. And then you got these young whippersnappers and stuff. You in your 30s? Shut the hell up. You don't know what kind of suffering we have. So I, I, I was five years old in 1973 when the New York Knicks went to the finals. I ain't seen them. They, they listen. They went to the finals. They, I'm sorry, when they won a championship. Yeah. They've been to the finals ever since. Right. But damn it, even when they went to the finals in 1999, we knew they weren't going to beat San Antonio. You knew Ewan with his old knees and Spreewell and no one going to beat. I, I, I'm sorry, Ewan was hurt. So you got Spreewell and Canby and yeah. you wasn't beating Tim Duncan and David Robinson. That's not, that was like when LeBron went to, against San Antonio the first go around in 2007. We knew he wasn't going to beat them. So congratulations getting there, but you ain't got a snowball's chance in hell of beating that team. This is the same yeah. thing with the New York Knicks. So I'm like, when I see people, I'm like, it's not just about getting there. It's about me firmly believing you got a chance. The last time that happened mm-hmm. was when you went against Olajuwon in mm-hmm. Houston, Houston and John Stark shot one for 11 from three-point range, two for 18 for the game in a game seven. You know, I'm, I'm, and Pat Riley, my man, Pat Riley, I love this man. I love Riles. But Pat Riley is the boss of the New York Knicks. I'm sorry, yes, he's the boss of the New York Knicks, the head coach. You picked up Rolando Blackman in the season, who does nothing but shoot. And there was nothing that said to you, John Starks is suffering right now. I need to get Rolando Blackman in there because John Starks tore it up in game six. See, it's moments like this. 
You can't be young, not even born, <laughs> ignorant, and come to me talking about, oh, the hell with you. You ain't no real Knicks fan. You better shut the hell up. Yeah. You don't know. You have no idea I'm, the frustration. Let me tell you how much I'm a Knicks fan. Yeah. Is every time the Knicks get on the streak, I watch, and then they lose. So right. don't, don't watch. I don't watch. Been watching. Don't watch. Don't watch. Been watching. Because they keep on winning. I, exactly. Because they won't jinx you. Hear about it? I think it'll mess with your emotions. I think it'll mess with your emotions. That's bad. being a Knicks fan. That's right. It's, I think it's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Like, That's so right. I'm like, I asked Eric or something. Anything. Like, yo, how do they do tonight? That's now, right. I won't physically watch because every That's time right. I physically watch, they physically lose. That's right. No <laughs> so, question. So I'm not asking you for that. I thought it was the bad luck. And then I feel that way sometimes too. And then I fool myself. God, they've been winning. Okay, I'm gonna watch them. Damn, I shouldn't have watched. But here's, here, let me give you even one more. Let me yeah, tell you man. how crazy. I moved in Miami. I've been, been in Miami 15 years. Right? Right? Oh, by the way, how you feel about living here? Oh, I love it. Oh, okay, yeah, I, 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 I'm but let me tell you, let me tell you how bad it yeah, was yeah, yeah. being a, a, a Knicks fan. It's, you, it's a star for law if, if you a Knicks fan and a Nets fan. Right. It's, not, it's frowned upon if you a Jets fan and a Giants yeah. fan. When I moved to Miami, I said, oh, that shit's out the window. I'm a fan of New York. I'm even a fan of the New York Islanders. It's a Ooh. hockey team, by the way. <laughs> 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 like, I'm just a fan of everything in New York. This is, place out, this is a place out here called Duffy's, right? Duffy's is a great bar, yeah, please. The Duffy's is a great bar. Shout out to Duffy's. But every time the Knicks and the Heat play, right. Everybody just get together. It's a dope, it's a dope ass bar. But, but it's a whole bunch of right. New Yorkers that have been living out here twenty years. Right. That we fucking got me adapted got, to Miami. But we not letting our what New York niggas no, no, go. No, no, you don't yeah. have to let it. You yeah. only came here for the weather, the taxes, <laughs> and <laughs> stuff that we don't need to mention. That's <laughs> all you came here for. That's me right in Miami. Let's not lie to the viewing public right here. But, but 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 I will tell you this. I will tell you this. You don't have to let go of your New York fandom because New Yorkers are everywhere. We That's get right. all of that. We get all of that. But I got a better story for you. Okay. So Miami hardcore. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Under Raleigh, they don't play. Yep. They don't communicate with nobody. They ain't returning text messages. Right. You know, they ain't leaking information. And right. they don't do all that. They wow. don't play that game. Wow. You know, they're real ones. They, they, wow. they, you know, if they got something to say, they say it publicly. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've known them for years. I'm very tight with the Heat organization. Right. I go back, you know, close to 30 years with a lot of these cats. Right. The Raleigh's and the Tim Donovan's. It's the right. communications guy. Thank you so much. Right. The Tim Donovan's and, 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 and Rob Wilson's and me in relations. The players, D-Wade, all of them. I mean, UD, all of them. Right. I'll go back. Yeah, I've known a lot of them for years, man. Got a lot of love for them, and they real ones. But here's the thing that happened to me last year. Okay. Let me show you how depressing this is. So, I'm furious with the New York Knicks because they didn't get Donovan Mitchell. And this is the inside, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody know World Wide West. Right. You know, that's my man. I love him. But we had to stop talking for a little while because they he was, was running the organization. No, 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 no. He works under the president of the basketball operation, Leon Rose. Okay. But they were pissing me off. Okay. And West would come to protect them and shit. And I'd be like, look, man, we can't talk. I'm going to kiss your ass. I'm kind of tired. This is the Knicks. This ain't, this ain't object. I'm not objective about the New York. I'm telling you right now. See, that's the key with, with me. So the journalism is like, out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Now, with the Knicks, out of here. I'm not objective. So now we got to know. I'm, I'm, I'm talking. Now, I'm objective <laughs> with what I report in terms of actual factual. <laughs> information right. but I'm not hiding my emotion right. the emotions right. I am rooting for the Knicks right. against anybody right. and when they lose I'm pissed <laughs> and I'm looking for who is going to incur my wrath because you're going to piss me off because yet again you failed okay right. so he's calling me to, 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 to be protective World Wide West yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, of Leon Rosen okay. like yo Russ man in the interest of our friendship dog <laughs> we not going to talk Cause I'm about to cut your ass out. I'm tired of this shit, man. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. You know what I'm saying? And I love him, man. I love him knowing him for over 25 years, but it was driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. And so here's what happened. Mm -hmm. You got an opportunity. I'm watching the Knicks, and I believe, I believe mm -hmm. that if the Knicks had Donovan Mitchell last year, they mm -hmm. in the conference finals. Miami does not beat them. Mm. Miami does not beat conference the New York finals, not the not the champions. Not the champions. Okay. Conference finals. Okay. They do not beat Miami does not beat the Knicks if Donovan Mitchell is with Brunson the way Brunson was playing. Yes. You with me? Yeah. So I'm saying this. Now you gotta remember, you gotta rewind the clock. Mm -hmm. I'm doing radio in New York City for ESPN radio back when Donovan Mitchell was coming out of Louisville. Mm. This damn dude, Phil Jackson. You know the 11-time champion? 
Six championships in Chicago, five in L.A. You know the Zen master who all of a sudden don't want to coach when he get to New York and shit. That's what we need you for. But you don't want to coach then. Right? He, he was like Joe Biden <laughs> when we had him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 That's true. <laughs> you know what? Here's the deal. We don't know because he wouldn't show us. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't show up. He, right? just, he was sitting on the At least Biden trying, trying, trying to show up. He was tripping all the way, but he's trying to show up. But the point that I'm trying to make is this. So, So Phil Jackson... Don't want to coach, right? And I'm going like this. I'm hearing all these names. Malik Monk and all, you know, all these people. And I said, Donovan Mitchell, Louisville, mm. the brother special. Mm. Get him. Mm. Phil Jackson drafted this dude, Frank Nielakina. Frank Nielakina. Never heard of him. In my life. Was from overseas. Overseas. He was from France. Yeah, I just came from France. Bonsoir, and I still ain't close out of this shit. Yeah, I'm like, come yeah, yeah, yeah. on, I just got man. back. I just I got was, back from France today. Yo, man. Yeah. And I was like, ah. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm furious. Okay. I'm fu- because I know you're passed up, right? Mm-hmm. So now I bring that up. Why? Because... Donovan Mitchell taking the league by storm, mm-hmm. averaging 25 a game, showing the skill set, Utah, blah, blah, blah. He, I know Utah. He wants out. Utah's looking to move him. And he wants to go home right. from upstate New York. One, come home. Right. One, come home. Right. No question. Figure out how the hell I know that emphatically. Right. He wants to come to New York. You understand what I'm saying? Leon Rose has an opportunity to get this man. Mm-hmm. And he is on the phone with Danny Ainge, hmm. who departs from Boston. Mm-hmm. It's now running the Utah Jazz. Mm-hmm. And Danny Ainge is universally recognized as one of the elite executives in the sport. Right. He's not someone you bluff. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. Right. right. This is what he wants. He wants about four or five picks. Mm-hmm. Want an R.J. Barrett. Mm-hmm. You know, want, you know want, 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 want Grimes. I'm like, get it off. You got 11 picks over the next seven years. You got Giannis coming? You got some sort of LeBron gonna leave LA? Who you got? <laughs> you got to get him. Not only does he not get him, mm. one of the reasons he doesn't get him, this brother, Leon Rose, has some dude named Gershon Rojas, who had recently got fired in Minnesota on the phone negotiating for him. Mm. Now again, how do you know this? I'm Stephen A, baby. This is what I do. <laughs> this, is, this is basketball. I'm telling you what I know. And I'm livid because you don't get them. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So now we fast forward to last year's playoffs. Mm-hmm. And you the Knicks. And you go and you take Cleveland out. Mm. You smoke them. They can't deal with y'all defensively. Their big boys don't respond. Jared Allen and, mm. or, and, and Mobley and these brothers, they don't respond to the challenge. You take them out in six. I'm like, yes! Let's go! Let's, the Heat are next! Right. The Heat are next! We coming! Right? The Heat are next! Right, relax, right? Relax. I, I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. All the Heat fans, they know what's going on. Hey, man, we're playing. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, right? <laughs> and then I watched Jimmy Butler... Oh yeah Put on a show <laughs> This is before, this before then, he had the, the braids too right Yeah yeah This is Jimmy Butler last year yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so Jimmy my man Love Jimmy to death Jimmy used to be in Philadelphia I felt Philadelphia was making a big mistake Because him and Embiid are like this Embiid loved the ground This brother walked on Jimmy Butler He holding cats accountable All that soft shit you saw from Ben Simmons You know what I'm saying now, I understand mental awareness Mental health All that stuff Not trying to disrespect him, But damn it you, you, you know Where's the mental health When it comes to cash And that check that seemed to, He seemed to know how to get to the bank So I want Hear that? You understand? What I'm saying? I ain't trying to hear that shit. All right. So anyway, so anyway, right? So so I mean, and then he on, and then he on the sideline, looking like Zoolander, looking like Zoolander. You know, got in the shades and the fly outfit and all of this other stuff. I, I'm like, hey, I say, ain't no doubt the honeys want you, but what that doing for your game? What that doing for your team? Don't get me started with that damn Ben Simmons. Anyway, I'm like, that don't happen with Jimmy Butler there. One way or another, something gonna happen. He ain't having that, right? But he in Miami now, and he had dropped like over 50 Mm -hmm. on on, on Milwaukee one game, right? Mm -hmm. And then they closed him out. So I'm like this, all right, you know, it's 
gonna be tough, but we we <laughs> next, we can take them. We can take them. Right. What am I bringing this up for? Because the Heat won. No. <laughs> That's not why. That's not why. That's not why. I'm bringing it up because remember, the Heat don't talk to nobody. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Right. During this time of year, they locked in. Eric Spoelstra, phenomenal coach, one of the best ever. They locked in. It's 11.30 at night. I get a text message. Mm. It's from Jimmy Butler. Y'all are next. (laughs) And I went like this. My heart, my heart has never hurt so bad over a basketball game before the game right. than that. Because when he said that to me, in my heart, you felt I knew they going to get us. Right. But I couldn't admit it to myself. I'm like holding out. Come on, come on, Jalen. How long did it take you to answer that text message? Immediately. <laughs> I said, oh, damn. <laughs> and then, and then, I, I, said, oh, I said, oh, damn. And that's all I said. All, that's all he said. That's all he said. No, he had the he eye said, of the tiger. He had the eye of the tiger. next. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. all my Knicks fandom and everything came down. Mm-hmm. And I went on first take the next day. And I see, he, he said, then we next. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said, we next. You know, I said, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. And, and then I go to the game, and he just looked. <laughs> and he didn't say a word. Oh, he just shook his head. I eye said, of the tiger. Uh, that was the story. Um, it was at one point. This is you just said one of your biggest disappointments. One of mine was I felt like we had a chance to get LeBron at one point. 2010. 2010. Yeah. You had just got fired in 2009. Really have, that's right. So we had we had a chance to get LeBron. Yep. Why didn't James Dolan? Why didn't the Knicks organization go all out to They did. They just didn't have anything to offer. Okay. Like like James Dolan's pitch was come to me and I'll make you a billionaire. That was his pitch. That's kind of like a cool pitch. Right? <laughs> I know that, unless you believe you're going to be a billionaire without him. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, which is what LeBron mm. believed. All right? So that was number one. So LeBron, they in Cleveland. Mm. You know, you got Donnie Walsh rolled in in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. You got James Dolan, who don't have the greatest reputation. Mm. You got Dan Tony and cats like that. All right? That, that, that had to compete with Pat Riley. Mm. Pat Riley, from what I was told, rolled up in there with the championship rings and put them on the table. You want one of these? You want one of these? Now, if you remember, I'm the one that broke that story. I went on the air. And I said, this is a dope LeBron, story, I said, LeBron, I said, I said, LeBron, no, I'm talking about LeBron's taking this, he's going to South Beach. Oh. And everybody was like, they would crucify me for three weeks because by this time I was gone, I was unemployed for damn well, near four, I was, on, I, was, I was unemployed damn near for a full year. Mm-hmm. I, re- I had started off resurrecting my career by going to Fox Sports Radio and I was doing morning radio. Mm-hmm. And on that morning radio show, I announced to the world, LeBron going to South Beach. I had sources tell me LeBron going to South Beach. This is three weeks in advance. He taking his talents to South Beach. What the hell does he know? No wonder he got fired from ESPN. He don't know shit. You know, he ain't doing this. He ain't doing that. Blah, blah, blah. And it was one of the hardest three weeks of my life because I knew I was right. But you I knew my source was reliable, but if he had changed his mind, right, you right, you know, if now, he had said something different, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it was like, and you know, the wolves were circling because you know, cats wanted me to fall on my yep. face. They wanted me to fail the whole nine. And so, had he announced that he was going somewhere else, you know, it would have made me look really, really bad at that particular moment in time in my career. Nobody's right all the time. Right. You only go by what your sources tell you. But at that time in my career, having been let go by ESPN a year earlier, having starting to resurrect myself on Fox Sports Radio in the morning time, with Fox Sports Radio not really getting that kind of shine, and now the eye of the sports world was on Fox Sports Radio because of what I reported. Mm-hmm. That night that LeBron announced he was taking his talents to South Beach was one of the most stressful nights of my entire life. 
But because because you got the props though for that. Yeah, but I'm saying. But he's saying. But before, before that, he was okay, worried. Okay, like, he could change his mind. That's right. Because right. he could change his mind or whatever. Okay. So had he said he was taking his talents everywhere, else, anywhere else, they would have said I was wrong. Right. I didn't know what I was talking about. No wonder ESPN let his ass go. Mm-hmm. Blah 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 right, blah. Right. So all of that was going on, right? Mm-hmm. And I knew my sources, and I knew my sources knew. Mm-hmm. So I had no doubt. But that didn't mean he wouldn't change his mind. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I was dealing with. That's what I was living with. And ultimately, when he decided to take his talents to South Beach, it's because, first of all, him and D-Wade were supposed to be there. Whether Melo wants to admit it or not, Melo, Melo was supposed to be there. Yeah. I'm the one that told you that. And hold You're, on. I also thought that Melo was supposed to join him with the Knicks at, at one point. That, no. That, that's no. Okay. No. That wasn't it. Okay. They were supposed to join. They had made a pact. Yo. We going to negotiate our deals in 2007 to have an out after year three. So we have an option to be opt out and become free agents to go wherever we want to go. Mm. Mello was like, yo, I'm from Baltimore. I ain't passing up that guaranteed money. Denver offered me five years. I'm going to take the five years, mm. which wouldn't make him a free agent until a couple of years later. Right, right. It was supposed to be D Wade, LeBron, and Melo. But Melo locked Man. himself into the cash in Denver. And as a result, Bosch opted out. And because Bosch opted out, Bosch ended up going there with them. And Melo had to force his way out of Denver a year later. Uh, uh, of Denver a year later wow. to come to New York City. But had Melo hmm. kept the option, uh, he had an option to get out. In 2010, it was going to be Melo, LeBron, and D-Wade. Now, they will t- now, I don't know. I've never heard them admit it. I don't give a shit what they say. I'm telling you what I know. Yeah. Melo, LeBron, and D-Wade. They, could have took they the can go on their shows. Or any they can, they can go on their shows. Mm-hmm. They can talk whatever they want. They can tell whatever story they want. Right. I'm the one that reported it. I'm the one that broke the story. I'm telling you the intel that I received. Right. It was Melo, D Wade, LeBron. And because Melo had opted out, had not opted out, and took the five full years for 80 mil from Denver at that time, right. that's why it didn't happen. And I got Melo on camera, right. on my show, quite frankly, on ESPN2 at that time, right. saying, yo, I wasn't walking away from the guaranteed dollars. Wow. Damn. So it was never supposed to be Bosch. Wow. It was supposed to be Melo. And now we sit here and looking at an illustrious career, a scoring machine, a future Hall of Famer, and Carmelo Anthony, who's never won a championship. And we all know if that brother was with D. Wade and LeBron, he'd have had at least those two and probably three of the four because you can't convince me when LeBron, and that's one of the reasons why, and I'm speculating in in fairness to LeBron, me and LeBron are respectful to one another. I got mad respect for him. Mm -hmm. Incredible role model, incredible play. I got him number two all time behind MJ as the greatest player in the history of basketball. All of that stuff, major, major props with him. But that's the biggest reason we don't fuck with each other. Because it was a choke job against the Dallas Mavericks. And I called it. I said, yo, it's a choke job. You understand? You can't have Jason Terry or J.J. Barea guarding you in the fourth quarter. That's inexcusable. Isn't it that you, you LeBron James? And that's what happened. Because he hadn't learned how to win yet right. to the degree that he, that he did. And see, when I think about measuring, just to shift a little bit, if you don't mind, Mm -hmm. when I think about the GOAT, that is the ultimate reason why I have MJ over him. Statistically, that's fine. Hell with all of that. Mm -hmm. Jordan averaged over 30 about nine times. Nine times defensive, all defensive NBA first team, 10 times scoring champion. What are we talking about? He went here all that and played in a different era that was far more physical Mm -hmm. than it is now. Yes. Right. The issue is this. The road to prosperity matters. Think about what you two have gone through in your life. Mm -hmm. We ain't talking about hip hop. Talk about your life. Your life. Right. The obstacles that you had to overcome to get to where you are. The greatness isn't measured by just your skill set and your success and where you landed. You Jay-Z, you LL, you others. Mm-hmm. It's not that. It's the road you travel. Mm-hmm. If you born with a silver spoon in your mouth, 
thinking you hit a home run when you on when you started off on third base. Right. That's entirely different right. than starting off from nothing and getting to where you are. And so what I'm saying is. MJ had to do that with LeBron. The difference is, as MJ was climbing, you never looked at him and said he's the reason y'all didn't win. Right. In that Dallas series, LeBron was the reason you didn't win the title. The first year in Miami, you should have had three titles. Right. You should have had the title against OKC, the title against San Antonio, the first title against Dallas. You should have had that. They had an agent, Jason Kidd, Jason Terry, J.J. Barea, okay? Dirk Nowitzki, of course, was a superstar at that particular moment in time. We get that. But it wasn't LeBron, D. Wade, and Bosch and those brothers. If LeBron shows up in that series, and specifically in the fourth quarter, because first three quarters, he was there. Right. Specifically in the fourth quarter. We're talking about four consecutive fourth quarters of an NBA Finals right. where there was an APB out for your ass. Yo, yo, we just talking facts. I, LeBron, I still have him number two all time. I still think that he's a great player, a great person, one of the great people. I mean, he's phenomenal. But the fact of the matter is that's on your resume. Mm -hmm. When we look at Jordan, well, you didn't beat the Pistons because Scottie Pippen had that damn migraine in game seven against the Pistons. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you finally overcame the Pistons and you got to the finals, although it was an Asian magic and it was Vlade Divac instead of Kareem and all this other shit, you still smoked them in five. Mm. Still smoked them in five. When Jordan switched hands in the mid air and mm -hmm. all that stuff in game two and all, all that stuff, we saw what the brother did to Drexler and Kersey and, and, and all of those brothers when he went against them in the second go round. Third go round, it was Barkley with Kevin Johnson. Mm -hmm. Dan Marley and those boys. We saw that. We saw him retire. Yeah. Come back. Come back in the second year with 17 games left. Lose in the playoffs against Nick Anderson and Dennis Scott and Shaquille and Horace Grant. And we saw them carry Horace Grant, his former teammate, off the court in the shoulders. And that brother went out and got Rodman. And the next year, they took him out four straight, swept him, mm -hmm. blew him out of the building. I mean, it was an annihilation because Jordan and Pippen had you scared to dribble the ball. Because they were pressing you full court. It was unreal. We saw you beat GP and Sean Kemp. Remember Sean Kemp? Yeah. I'm not talking about yeah. Sean Clump. I'm yeah. talking about Sean yeah. Kemp. You, remember Sean you understand Kemp? what I'm saying? I'm talking about that, brother. You beat him. We saw you beat Malone and Stockton, not once but twice. This is what we saw. At what? We saw him against Portland, Jordan against Portland, and we saw him not look great in game six, and, 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 and Phil Jackson pulled him to the bench, and the reserves came back on like a 15-2 to two run or whatever it was. But we also saw Phil Jackson put his ass right back in that game to close. Mm -hmm. This is Jordan we talking about. Right. You didn't see that LeBron mm. in that series against Dallas. Mm. My point in, all of, in, in saying all of that with the story is this. When we're measuring greatness, it's not about your resume. Mm. All of y'all got a resume. Right. It's about moments. <clears throat> and when those moments arrive, where you at? Who are you? Who are you? Now, if it's an aberration and it's something that you've never done before and you're being asked to do it, that's different. But when you got a game that's Herculean and it's that way throughout the regular season, throughout the first, second, third round, and then you get to the finals, and all of a sudden it evaporates, that's a problem. That's a problem because it's you not being able to do what you normally do when the moment arrives. This ain't Stephen A. choking with some damn first pitch at Yankee Stadium when I never stepped on a mound in my damn life. You had them on the Louboutins on. I did. I did. I made a business decision. I made a business decision. I'm going to try to get, I'm gonna try to get it over the plate. But what I'm not going to do is bust my ass on national television on a mound. I'm not doing that. All right? So I made a business decision. But I choked this devil over. But I've never been on a mound before. Right, right. That's entirely different than me being on a mound all the time and I'm throwing strikes and then all of a sudden the moment arrives and I can't find the strike zone mm -hmm. there's a difference mm -hmm. and I'm saying to you mm -hmm. we ain't never said that about MJ and that is why MJ has goat status amongst those of us who know like I watched Gilbert Arenas say that he thinks the NBA got soft because of Europeans right okay 
I thought that was an interesting take. Gilbert I, knows basketball, Gilbert and I res- and, I, and I respect the hell out of Gilbert. Arenas. And I did. I, I never. I never looked at it like right. that. So he said. He said they, they don't play defense. Right. They just want to shoot jump shots. Right. So that's what made it soft. Well, so I you, won't say that because Manu Ginobili played defense. Yeah. Manu Ginobili, Rudy Gobert is a is a three time defensive player of the year. That brother ain't from the states. I mean, you got European players that play defense. Not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. But he's right for the most part in terms of how they change the complexion of the game. Mm-hmm. But understand why they change the complexion of the game. If we're going to be... Listen, man. We're we here on Drink Champs. We're on Drink Champs. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's the brother's fault. Wait it's up. the brother's fault. Let Watch. me tell you how. The NBA is a business. Mm-hmm. They about making money. Mm -hmm. You make money in sports when you make your product attractive to the masses. Mm. So you got the bad boy Pistons, right? Very physical game. NBA wanted to take that out. They thought they were successful. Then Raleigh went out and had Oakley, Ewing, Mason. You see what I'm saying? Catholic. And even at the guard spot. Yeah, even the, don't say no damn Charles Smith. Don't get me started with his five minutes layups. I don't want to hear that. We ain't going that route. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is that when when you have that, right? Mm-hmm. So you got these rough riders, right. okay? Mm-hmm. And if you remember, you remember this. You appreciate. You gonna give me a high five okay, on this okay, one? Okay. Before Mace, before Oakley, Ken Bannister. Yes. Remember that brother? We talking about the tough Got shit. that brother out the suit. He got, got that brother straight off the streets. Mm-hmm. Straight off the streets. You understand? I mean, he was like, oh, I remember, remember Cedric Entertainer was doing Kings of Comedy mm-hmm. and he was joking around and was like, you can't have a black person in hockey. They'll just be roast, just skating around. <laughs> looking I wish you could yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting around. Like, hey, that was Bannister. Wow. He was that kind of dude, right? Wow. So Riles was like. Anthony Mason was like that too to me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, he, Bannister preceded him is my point. Okay. And then don't forget Xavier McDaniel. Okay. Don't forget him. Okay. You're right. Another one scared nobody. Right. Rough riders, right? So what did Riley do? Riley said, we ain't got the talent to beat. We ain't got the talent to beat Chicago. But if we get enough dudes that can snatch their heart, we could get them. And obviously you couldn't do that to MJ. Mm-mm. But that's the only reason you couldn't do it to them. Because they were giving Scottie Pippen and the rest of those cats nightmares. Right. You see what I'm saying? So my point is, as the game evolved, the NBA, particularly with the Dream Team, the original Dream Team in Barcelona, you're seeing all of this. And as the game evolved, you saw what attracted the global market to the sport. That wasn't going to do it. You want to see shooters. You want to see a more up-tempo style. You wanted to see more finesse because it ensured the likelihood of those players being on the court more when it counted Mm. Then if you allow the level of physicality to dominate the game, mm. that could compromise cats. Mm. A perfect example is, let's look at Steph Curry. I think that Steph Curry is the greatest shooter God ever created. I've had Hall of Fame. More Famous, than Ray Allen? Huh? More than Ray Allen? Easy. Okay. okay. As great Continue. as Ray Allen was. Continue. Ray Allen, every, <laughs> any shooter okay. that tells you that they were a better shooter... Then Steph Curry, bitch slap him and throw him off the shelf. Oh, shit. <laughs> just, just get rid of him. Just get rid of him. Just get rid of him. They, they're not being honest. There is no shooter in the history of the game better than Steph Curry because you had spot, spot up shooters, you had catch and shooters, you had shooters that had their favorite spot, right wing, left wing, top of the key, 21 feet, 23 feet, 25 feet. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry, there is no spot nor is there any range that he can't touch. Right. Do you realize with Steph Curry, you literally have to keep your head on a swivel from the moment he steps past half court? Wow. He can pull up from 40. Wow. He's that lethal. There has never been anything like him. But I've had Hall of Famers. Hall of Famers. Tell me he wouldn't average 20 a game if he was playing in our era. And, they, and I said, what? Magic and I, era? I, 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 said, I, said, I said, what? Magic Why? Jordan era? But they weren't disrespecting him. Uh-huh. What they were saying was the game was so physical, mm-hmm. we could get away with hitting his elbow. Yeah. Right. We could get away with tripping him. Yeah. We could get away with when he's running through those picks, giving him, a, giving him some wood. Right. We could do that. You can't do that now. 
And because you can't do that now, it would have compromised them. What is the one thing that has compromised Steph Curry, particularly earlier in his career? He had those ankle injuries. And those ankle injuries, those ankle injuries... Man, they would have stepped on his foot as he was walking through screens on purpose. Oh, shit. Just stepped on his foot. How you gonna catch him you the referee? It's an accident. Right. You're gonna think of, oh, whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and listen, you had Lawrence Taylor in football mm -hmm. later on in life admitting, man, he would send prostitutes to the hotel room to 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 to, to the night before the game for opponents. You know what I'm Crazy stuff like that. This is a book. This is a book. I'm just using that as an, I'm just using that as an example. I'm using that as an example to highlight back in the day the extent they would go to to derail an opponent. Right. Mm -hmm. I know certain superstars. One of the things they love to do. See, these are these are, and this is what I say when I can't say everything. Okay. Right. I know superstars. They was in fairness to them, they were single, they weren't married. Right. They would literally go to go after your girl mm. just to mess with you right. before they played you <laughs> and then step out on the court and bust your living ass. And they say, just to demoralize you and let you know war shit. you can't mess with me. Okay. And literally when they're doing that, you might go home thinking you ain't the man he is in other departments <laughs> after, he get, after they get through with you. <laughs> and they did it on purpose. I'm just telling you, these are the stories. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, they told me. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm like, I ain't make it up. <laughs> They're like, yo, this is what happened. No, and I would never tell who, but I'm just saying to you, those kind of things. So when I'm covering the game, I'm bringing all of this up here to the equation. I sit up there and say, stay off the weed, right? <laughs> I'm not talking about brothers that he ain't costing you money. <laughs> Hell, I got family members been smoking weed all their life. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Depending on whose relative's house I go to, I might get a contact high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, then, come on, y'all. I'm like, what? I'm not talking about somebody not smoking when it's weed. I'm talking yes. about when it's compromising your dollars because yes. you're going to get, you're going to get fined, you're going to get suspended. Yep. Don't let it mess with your money. Right. Back in the day, when I was covering the sport, we sat courtside. We had the scorer's table. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing, you're checking in. You have to walk right by us. I saw Larry Brown one day, and this was not Iverson. Mm -hmm. It was not, not, Iverson. not Iverson. I saw Larry Brown one day, look at a player, three down, three down. The player was right in front of me. He went like this, huh? I threw up my paper and just walked away. Uh. I said, motherfucker, hi. <laughs> he, ain't gonna do, he ain't gonna do nothing tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was when weed wasn't legal in 26, right. 27, 20, 26, yeah, 20. Man, it don't, it don't have to be. I don't care. Knock yourself out. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, that was when weed wasn't legal mm -hmm. in 26 to 27 states. Right. Without diming anybody. Right. How much weed you think is being smoked before games now? Oh, no. I think they go. Oh, I'm I talking about in any sport you pick. And oh, yeah. by the way, and by the way, all you got to do is look at them. Shit. So I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there like like you 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 really mad when you see me on first take and I'm like this. Stay off the weed. No, no, or, I'm, or, or I'm like this. I'm like this because I'm not saying stay off the weed to any specific person to dime them out, because I wouldn't do that. But I'm sitting there looking at them. Yeah, he had a problem last night. He didn't seem like himself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and you mad. You mad. But your ass walked up to the scorer's table wobbling. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like and, 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 and that's why when I'm watching cats with their podcasts and all of this other stuff. See, you got people in the media and other places pissed off because you looking at players and you like what they trying to do is they trying to etch out the media. You just rely on us. You ain't got to talk to them. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. I said, y'all looking at it all wrong. I want all of them to have their, their podcast. All of them to have their voice because they going to talk. <laughs> and when they're going to talk, I'm going to have news to talk about because mm. I'm watching. I'm watching. You can talk all you want to. You still got to play. Right. I'm looking at you. You talk all the stuff you want. I'm looking at you. Right. I saw what your ass did. 
I saw you roll up in the game. (laughs) I saw you well enough, whether it's me in person Mm. or the camera angle zooming in on you, I saw how bloodshot your eyes was. I saw how you look like you could barely open that. Oh, I, I, I watch, I'm watching you move. I'm watching you move. I even went to the doctor the other day, man. And I asked him, I said, yo, man, because uh, it's this cat that, 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 that I talked to for like 10X Health, Gary Breck. I got him on my podcast now because I made a tremendous health change because I was really in bad shape a couple, you know, a year and a half ago and stuff like that. Really resurrected my health. I'm feeling better than I felt in like 30 years, right? So I go to him, thank you. And I, I went to him, man. I said, let me ask you a question. Scientifically, could you give the breakdown of weed? Oh, shit. And tell me what kind of effect it has on people and why. Go to the podcast, Stephen A. Smith Show no on problem. YouTube. And, and, and he'll break it down to you. <clears throat> right? You ain't gonna have no problem. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna have no problem. None of y'all ain't gonna have no problem. But when he says what he says, Mm -hmm. you're going to ask yourself, should them brothers be doing that if they got to play? They got to play it. Probably not. Because you got to remember, calms your mood, mellows you out, helps you sleep, et cetera, et cetera. You know what it doesn't do? It doesn't elevate your level of urgency. Mm. So let's say, for example, you going against Kobe. Who wasn't doing that? Or you going against Jordan or somebody like that who wasn't doing that, huh? right? Right. And you mellow. Mm-hmm. And they killers. Right. What chance do you have? You have no chance. <laughs> because there's a level of urgency yep. that they feel. You get the check. Mm-hmm. You get in the bag. And on top of it all, you know, everybody know you can ball. Right. So you ain't no scrub. Right. Right. But did you win? All right. See, that's where Stephen A comes in. Because that's me like, yeah, dog, I know why the hell you lost. I know, I, I know what you didn't do. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm not, I might be talking about them, mm-hmm. but I'm not talking to them. Right. I'm talking about that audience out mm-hmm. there to say, let them talk that shit they want to. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. You got to hold them more accountable than that. You mm-hmm. can't always win. Mm-hmm. But you got to be able to look at any professional and go like this. Did you do all it took right. to win? Yep. Because as a Nick fan, mm-hmm. if, some, if a Nick walked in here mm-hmm. and looked you in your face, mm-hmm. yeah, man, you know, shit. <laughs> yeah, you know, he tried to win, you know, but yeah. shit happened. Oh, no, oh, no, Ain't no, no big deal. <laughs> You gonna be like this? No, no, edit. Get I, out I, of I don't like. I don't, you gonna I don't be like, like this? I don't like his ass. You better rapper. I'm gonna like, rapper. Let me be the rapper. You gonna know, be like, I don't like. I don't like his ass. Like you understand? Know I don't like him because you you like. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. It ain't nonchalant. Right. It ain't blase. What, what you mean? Right, right. That's how you gonna feel. That's me. Let, let, let me That's ask, me. Let me change the subject a little bit, like, but it's still sure. on the same subject. Do you think LeBron is a victim of his circumstances? Because like you just said, the league has changed, right? Yeah. So a lot of people accuse LeBron of not having killer instinct, right? But when I look at youngsters who only have, like me me personally, my uh, Shabazz, I wish Shabazz was here, what I, what I was about to say, wish he was here. He had right. a TNT shirt, uh, yep. jacket on. But to me, and I know you could debate me, I know there's plenty of people who could debate me what I'm about to say right now. Sure. Me, I think Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer of all time. Okay. Because right? I've seen all Clearly of- the best defensive boxer of all time. Without uh, yeah, yeah, Okay. Without I, I, I agree to both. But I've seen all of his fights. Right. So have I. I missed some of, uh, 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 I missed all of Ali. So I, I came a little later. Right. I missed even some of Tyson's fights. Okay. But I see all of Floyd Mayweather. Ironically, the only fights I didn't see is his exhibitions. I can't stand it. I love him. I love him too much for his put his legacy on the line. Right. But is LeBron is LeBron a a victim of his circumstances? Meaning, could you think LeBron could have survived in the Kobe Jordan era? Survive, yes. Prosper, I'm not so sure. Allow me to explain. I would like to. Allow me to explain. I would like to. And, and before I answer that question, let me say this. Let's not forget Sugar Ray Leonard. That's right. Let's not forget Wilfredo Benitez. Mm-hmm. 
was a bad brother. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget Salvador Sanchez, who died in a plane crash. Let's not forget Hector Camacho. No, no, no. We can forget him. We can, <laughs> we can, we can forget. Now, he wasn't on that level. Okay, Hector okay. Camacho was nice, but he wasn't on that level, okay? okay? I'm giving you dudes that was on that level. Okay. I would say uh, Aaron Pryor, but, Aaron he Pryor took, yeah. but he took too many many punches. He just, he'd just take you out. Is it Aaron Pryor the one that had the, the, the gloves? I don't think so, but I know I know I know that when he beat Alexis Aguero, Alexis Aguero, Alexis yeah. Aguero they were talking about give him the stuff, give him the stuff. Yeah. I don't know what the hell the yeah. stuff was, uh, right? I don't know yeah, what the hell the stuff that. was. I remember that. But let me tell you why I answered the LeBron James question that way because it's a great question that you asked, right. Right. and everybody needs to understand this. Just like I talked about moments, mm-hmm. you got to talk about competition. Mm-hmm. So when we talking about competition, right? Then it has to be something along the lines of what would have happened had you gone against those people? Mm -hmm. Feel me? When LeBron was struggling Mm -hmm. to develop the killer instinct Mm -hmm. that ultimately was in him and he was able to conquer to ultimately beat a young OKC team Mm -hmm. after he had beaten Boston to get, you know, to the finals and all this other stuff, right? Indiana actually too. What I'm saying to you is that while you were learning how to win, Mm -hmm. would Jordan have ever let you learn? See, here's what you have to understand. Michael Jordan is 6 and 0 oh in Fine. NBA final series. MVP of every single NBA final series. That he won. Incredible. Who never allowed the series to get to game 7. Not one time. Not one time. And so when you say to me LeBron playing in that Jordan era a threat to MJ then what we have to ask ourselves is, how would MJ have responded to a perceived threat? Mm. You don't get to dismiss that. <laughs> you got to absorb that. You got to absorb, I. Right. They saying, your ass can take me out. There are people saying that to Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. How would he have responded? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I believe because of what I saw from LeBron Mm -hmm. in that fourth, in the fourth quarters of those of that series against the Dallas Mavericks. Right. That Michael Jordan would have never allowed him to find out (laughs) what it was to win. That's That's what I'm saying. Wow. That's the difference. And so when people talk to me, yeah, LeBron's an ultra talent. And LeBron and MJ was a 6'9, 260. Mm-hmm. But my retort is, well, LeBron is 6'9, 260 and still lost six NBA finals. Mm. Mm. He did lose six. Mm-hmm. Ain't been to 10, mm. but he lost six. You have Boston in, in his way when he was younger. MJ, mm-hmm. you had Detroit in his way when he got older. Mm-hmm. LeBron had Indiana with Paul George and Rick Smith. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and shit like that. We, 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 I'm not even saying Rick Smith, but 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 Paul George and the crew. Right. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Roy Hibbert. That's right, Roy Hibbert. Right. Okay, he, he, and I like Roy. But I'm saying this: mm-hmm. you had that kind of stuff. You ain't have Boston with Bird, McHale, Parrish, Ainge, and uh, you ain't have Isaiah, Dumas, Vinny the Microwave coming off the bench, mm. Sally, Lambeer. Uh, 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 I mean, what? What? You ain't had that. They got me mad. You, you, you ain't just... had that. You had, so you had, you had Indiana early, right. Toronto late with DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. Much respect to both. Mm. Much respect to both. But that's what you had. Mm-hmm. You didn't have those obstacles. Mm-hmm. That is how I look at it. Mm-hmm. And that is why LeBron James will never be my GOAT. Right. Ever. It will always be Michael Jordan over him. But mad respect to him. He's on the Mount Rushmore basketball. Incredible role model in this day and age, social media and beyond. He's, he's incredible. He just ain't MJ. 
is, is it possible, and I know this is going to sound like a cliche type of question, is it possible that Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron is all some of the greatest of all time? Sure. But when you compare it to each other, then it's, it's optional. And that's why I get pissed. Okay. Because of the sensitivity. Like okay. I've said to LeBron teams, the Rich Paul, the Maverick Carters of the world, and others. Mm-hmm. I remember I said to Rich Paul, you act like it's an insult to call him the second greatest player of all time. Mm. Rich Paul said, it is an insult. I said, I can't, I can't talk to you. Mm-hmm. Can't talk to you. Right. <laughs> it's a, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't talking to you. I'm not wasting my you time with that. Above Kobe, <laughs> which is very surprising. But, 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 but the reason why is because LeBron played the difference. See, M- Kobe is number two to MJ, mm. playing the identical position with the identical style. Mm. And so my point is, I'm looking at LeBron and thinking about the point forward that you are. Mm-hmm. You know, a Magic Johnson type who mm-hmm. can still put up 27 a night in your career, rebounds, assists, mm-hmm. playmaking ability, scoring ability, and at one time was an elite defender for at least one year. And so when I'm looking at all of those things, that is what I put over Kobe because mm-hmm. he facilitated winning to a greater to, to, to uh, an even greater degree individually mm. as Kobe did in terms of making your teammates better. Kobe was just an assassin. Right. And so as a result, he emulated Michael and he was the closest to Michael in that regard, but he was still number two at the same position. I'm going to give LeBron respect. What the hell? Fuck? I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Keep it going. I have no idea. That's, that's, All right. that's Kobe or somebody. That's Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Kobe like Stephen A. Smith. Get it together. <laughs> right. Just, just, oh, no, it's the TV. 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 Look ahead. Look ahead. The long was in hit me. That's all. So anyway, so anyway, it was like, that's the only difference. That's the, the squad. The, you know, that's the nugget that I'm picking apart. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was that was a great fucking ass. <laughs> that was a great fucking ass. You got the flowers. Um, yes, Stephen A. Yep. Our show is about giving they flowers to the people. I want to tell you how much. Like I, I watched you so much that there's been times yep. I got busy, mm-hmm. and I knew that it was okay not to watch the game because mm-hmm. you're gonna cover it in the morning. And I, I enjoy sometimes. Watching you covering the game <laughs> more than actually yeah, watching, watching the actual game. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you that. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, you'll break it down and you're very, very fair. You like, but you're very firm. Right. If a player has that two for 11 night. Right. I call it. You call it. So we wanted to face to face, man to man, give you your flowers, man. Hey. To your face. Hey. To your face. Hey. Snoop Dogg said it's, it's better than a Grammy because it comes from his people. Damn right. And we want to give you your, your flowers. You, bro. Let you know how great you are. I'm gonna be honest. Thanks, in case you, I know you know this, but in case you don't know, you changed the way we watch sports. We changed the way Absolutely. that 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 we articulate sports and right. we understand sports. Right. And in case anyone had never told you. That's who you are. You are. A, you are. Go. I said it in the, in the, in the um, intro, and I mean that. Shit. I appreciate it. You know man. what I'm saying? I mean that. It means shit. a lot. Uh, Thank you. And you continuing to be great. You out here losing weight, doing your guys' <laughs> thing, running around. We love. We respect you. I want to give you your flowers, man, because you sincerely, one million percent, deserve your props every single day. Thanks a lot, bro. You know what I mean? When people talk about you, I know why they talk about you because you're that. You're that guy. And we want to tell you how much we f- appreciate y'all, man. Hell yeah. Thanks Hell so yeah. much. Hell yeah. Doing quick time? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Cool. You, uh, you want to bring in Sunny D? And, yeah, and yeah. You want to bring in Sunny D? Let's bring in Sunny D. Sunny, and, and, Sunny and, uh, D, Paul, and, 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 and Diego. 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 Come on. This is the United Nations. of uh, This is United Nations. We got all cool. type of races here. I like it. <laughs> yes. Talk about whatever y'all want. Yes, yes. So, uh, all right. So, but you want to explain him the, the so, game? Yeah. So now this is a, a drinking game that we play. Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah. And I ain't no drinker, you know. Yeah, I'm drinking okay. a little bit today. Yeah, I get my hands in color. You can take a sip. Or you could have a designated drinker like sure. as for the shots. Go. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to give you uh, yeah. two choices. All right. If you pick one, no drinking. Okay. But if you say both or neither, the politically correct answer, right. we all drink. Got all it. of us. Right. Drink. Yeah, we, we don't leave you out. Cool. All right, so I can't wait for this one. And then if you have any stories to go behind any of the names yeah, okay. or things that we bring up, okay. please, please dive in. No problem. No problem. By the way, um, I'm glad of this first question. She, she bringing she bring my drink. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad of this first question. Thank you so much. 
Try. Get your shots, because guys. We, we, you can do light, light shots. You don't have to go crazy. Well, they said I can sip on this. Drink. Yeah, you can yeah, 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 do that. Yeah, you can sip. have some Shots to the. All right. By the way, stay on the gap. By the way, uh. These Thank people so who are about the name is making hip hop so exciting right now. Right. I, 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 I don't necessarily or at all, I don't at all co-sign any, oh, any brothers beefing. I don't co-sign that. We but should. I, but Not I co-sign no. competition. Right. I don't, comp I don't co-sign drama or Healthy competition. wars. Right. But if, if, if me and you going to go in the booth together... And or go separately, right. and I'm gonna try to take your head listen, off listen, as you should. Listen, when, when, when Kendrick, Drake, J. Cole, and all of them got in that the other day, yeah. I, all I said was, "Yo, we grew up. The hip hop industry was born from that's battling. the foundation. That's of the foundation yeah. of it. All right, so, you know. So, so that's uh, the first question I gotta ask. All right, so go ahead. Is Drake or Kendrick Lamar? Damn. <laughs> first of all, first of all, major props to both of them. Yes, major props to both of them. And thank y'all. And both, by the way, both. and by the way, as an aside. Kendrick Lamar did a hell of a job acting in power. Yeah. Oh yeah, when he when was 50, crackhead, 50, right? Yes, he was, yes, yes. Yes. he was phenomenal. I mean, he was phenomenal. Right? Yeah, he was he was ill. I mean, uh -huh. he was it was special. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with Drake mm -hmm. because even though everybody knows Kendrick Lamar and knows how gifted he is, you got too many people periodically trying to trying to come at Drake, and he's always standing. Mm -hmm. Like Ill. mainstream Globally It's Ill. I mean he's one of those dudes right. It could be the look It could be how he communicates It could be his flavor It could be anything But Drake damn near seems impenetrable mm -hmm. And What I take from Drake is I don't hear too many people Coming at Kendrick Lamar yeah, no, nobody's mm -hmm. really. I don't. I, yeah, but everybody always trying to that's, come at Drake. That's facts. Yeah, Damn, that's facts. And yeah. obviously, I can relate to that. Right. So I'm gonna say Drake. Okay. What? what are we doing? Okay, that, that, that was, that I'm gonna say Drake. Okay. Does that mean I need to take a sip? No, 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 no. If you didn't pick, if you pick, okay. you don't okay. gotta okay. drink. Okay. Yeah. Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. I was gonna switch it up. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing. Don't even. Let's, what would have been the switch up? What would have been the switch up? Nah, I'm not gonna say it because I'm gonna switch it up somewhere else. Okay. 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 Ewan or Hakeem Olajuwon? Damn. I got to go with the dream, Hakeem Olajuwon. Uh, I mean, he did beat him in the finals. Okay. He did bust his ass while he beat him in the finals. Uh, he was a league MVP. He was an NBA finals. I mean, Hakeem the dream, Olajuwon is something spectacular. Uh, I mean, the dream shaking the whole nine. You got to go with Hakeem the dream, Olajuwon. I respect Ewan, appreciate him, love him. But he wasn't Hakeem Olajuwon. Olajuwon got Kenny Smith. Of your hood, that's right. Feeling good about itself. Damn right. That's, that's right. right. They, they, that's they, my brother. They, they right won the there. championship the together, together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Him, Craig, Elo, Robert, Ori, and all of those brothers. Yeah, Robert, 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 Nas or Jay Z. Okay. Jay Z. Now let me say this about. Be quick with his answer. Let, let me. I'll be, I'll be quick with it because <laughs> somebody asked me the other day and I picked them and them over Nas. Right. I'm thinking about. I know Nas is special. I'm not trying to dismiss him. He's phenomenal. Right. But we appreciate him. I got to take into account how much you're appreciated the world over, regardless of communities, regardless of ethnicities, regardless of your heritage, where your locale is, whatever. I got to take all of those things into consideration. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Eminem is something spectacular. Mm -hmm. Plus, he's white. Mm -hmm. And he's spectacular And you got brothers Standing down against him Because they know How spectacular he is Now that doesn't mean Nas is doing it Because Nas is phenomenal In his own right And we can't ignore that But in the, the, the flip side to it Is that I gotta acknowledge That when you talk about Jay-Z mm -hmm. I mean we talking about Somebody that I consider To be the greatest of all time mm -hmm. And when you when you talk about Jay-Z, do you know what you have to do sometimes? Talk. You got to bring up Tupac and Biggie, God rest their souls, mm -hmm. and what they would have been if they were still alive mm -hmm. to conquer Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. You don't have you a living... You taking that same Jordan? Uh, you, you, you don't have a living uh -huh. creature in a hip-hop game that you say definitively eclipses Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. You just don't have it. But let me, let me, let me sure. reiterate... Um, what you were saying earlier, I think Jay Z's a uh, victim to his circumstances as well because the rap game was really, really foul when Biggie and Pac was going at it. And after Biggie and Pac's loss, it's kind of like the LeBron. From the standpoint of what? 
From the standpoint, you seen like of, the emergence of yeah, Jay Z is from the those game actions. Wasn't as as, as hardcore. And, and just, but what I'm saying okay. is, that's why I brought up you got to bring up Biggie or Tupac. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You right. I said, I said because when you asked me that question, I'm thinking about. Living rappers and all that other than that. Mm. If you ask me if Biggie or Tupac could have been Jay Z, right. I'd say yeah. A lot yeah. of people would. I'd say yeah. yeah they could. They, they could have been. Void. Now, 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 now. To me, Biggie would have been that dude mm-hmm. to rival Jay Z. Right. Tupac, to me, as brilliant as he was as an artist, he was just as potent and profound as an. Activist. Yep. So because of that, I mean, when you go back, he's multifaceted. I mean, when you go back, when I think about myself, mm-hmm. some of the positions that I've taken, some of, the, I mean, because you know, you you talk about me, I'm communicating sports, but I'm also talking politics. I'm talking, I'm talking a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. And when you, if you really, really paid attention to what I have to go up against and the platforms that I'm on. Having to know I got to deal with corporate America in the streets right. and I got to do all of that. I think about not comparing myself in any way, but I think about Tupac, mm. not as a not as a comp, not as something to compare to. But I think about him as someone that I marveled at mm. because when he stood before anybody and like literally spoke his mind, right. no yeah. matter what the subject was, you was transfixed. You had to stand at attention and really, really listen. Even if you were disagreed, and I've seen reporters and commentators and others disagreeing with him, but you had to shut the hell up and listen. Right. Because what the brother had to say was deep. And a lot of times I'll get on cats, you know, I'll be like this. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things is a pet peeve of mine from us in our community when we're like, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? No, the fuck I don't. <laughs> you didn't speak yet. Yeah. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> say it first. <laughs> now follow that up by saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you can't say that before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like you in the business and you, you know, you out here trying to make paper. Right. Mm-hmm. Trying to make some money. You know, you're talking business with somebody. You got to roll up on them and speak right. fluently. You got to know how to communicate in a fashion that will resonate with them to sell yourself on the opportunity you're trying to get them to embrace with you. Mm. How are you doing that? And then, yeah, man, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just trying to, you know, you know what I mean? No, I don't. <laughs> Please say shit yet. <laughs> and that drives me crazy. <laughs> say it first. Right. And then if you followed it up with, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. <laughs> I got it. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? That's why we I don't interview it. young artists. That's right. We don't interview Maybe. young artists. We don't want the one word answer. We don't interview them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Drink yeah. Chance Army, we back. Underdog yeah. Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we're entering the last week of the NBA. The right. playoffs is coming, playing tournaments is coming. But before we get into that, Drink Champs Army, don't forget, download the app, Underdog Fantasy app. Underdog Fantasy Use the code Drink, Drink Champs. Drink Champs or Drink Champs. Or we got to be w- way more clear with this, guys. Yes, yes, all right. Yes. The code is Drink Champs, but you oh. can put Drink or you can put Champs. Yes. All three work. We need you to sign it up, goddammit. Sign yeah. up and be a better person today. Yeah. Today, you'll be a better person immediately. So you sign up the app, download the app, get down with Drink Champs. It makes you a better person. And someone's Make matching deposit, $100. And they'll get matched up to $100. Oh, and EF in the spot. And everyone $100. Yeah. $100. I told you, I'm part of it. What we're going to do, we're going to keep it home team. We're going to do highlight two games. Let's go. Bulls and Knicks, ooh, ooh, Toronto, great. and Miami Heat. Okay. Nice, we're going to get nice. into the Miami Heat first because I got to say, they're playing to be in the playing tournament. Yes. Yeah, you're yeah, fighting to get in the, in the playoffs. They don't want to be in the playoffs. Boston okay. Celtics has secured the number one spot in the East. Okay. Okay. So they're not involved right. today. 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 Congratulations. Today. 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 And we got a special gazino in the house. Yeah. So, the total points per game has been an average of 110 for the Miami Heat. Will they go higher or lower? Against Toronto's defense, the average is 118 for their opponents. I, I, I'm going to go higher over Miami. Miami's on fire. I, I, I love living yeah. in Miami. I love being a part of it. Just not when they go against the Knicks. So, I'm going to say higher. Miami. Uh, home team higher, for sure. Sonny? Higher, I agree with both of the guys. For the first time, I got hey. heat higher as well. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go low. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go low. He got, got low. the heat. Hey, he 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 he
in reverse, uh -huh. Toronto averages 112.6 points offensively, and the Miami Heat allows 108 points. So will Toronto go higher or lower than 112? It depends if Drake is in the game. If Drake go to the game, they are gonna go higher. If Drake is not at the game, they go. They, they play better when Drake is there. They play better when Drake. Is there. The last they're playing in the 305 in the Kaseya Center. I'm gonna say lower than. Drake ain't coming to Miami for the game. Yeah, Drake, yeah, yeah, Drake, 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 Drake would come. That's a perfect excuse to come to Drake Miami. Drake would come to Miami. Well, yeah, that's a perfect excuse. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go higher for Toronto. What's the It's gonna be a game. Definitely low. And Miami has a top five scoring defense, and they're at home, and they're trying to get in the playoffs for position. Okay. Super I mean, not only do I have the Heat and Bam Adebayo having more than five blocks, I have the Heat having lower than 112 points. Mm. And we like Toronto. to just say Bam Adebayo, uh, a.k.a. is the, the Blocktopus. Bam! Do you know, higher or lower? Yeah, yeah, Toronto sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes them. <laughs> Nobody wants to go there. So, uh, you're, so you're saying lower? Lower. Okay, lower. lower. Fair Good call. Okay. Now, getting into the players now. Right to bam. Points per game average is 19.6. Will it be higher or lower? Who's the big man in Toronto? The big man in Toronto is Kelly Olynyk. Yeah. Ex Miami Heat. That guy's a dud. Ex Miami Heat? He's yeah. a dud. He's also, he's also Canadian. He's a dud. He don't play defense. Yeah, you know that. He was yeah, yeah, yeah. He sucks. Well, that was he's one a, of my notes. He's, he's, he's a dud. <laughs> Kelly so, dud. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going lower as well. Right. Lower than 19.6. Yeah, per game. lower. You a fan? I'm going to go lower as well. But, all right. Now, go higher. Sticking on the rebound section, he averages 10.7 rebounds. Ooh. Bam. Bam at a bio. Is he going higher or lower than 10.7 rebounds? Sonny. Higher because Kenny. Uh, Ken Olenek. No, Kelly, 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 Kelly the dud. I'm not going to say he's a bad player. He's no, he in the sucks. for a reason, but <laughs> Jeff, trust me, I watched the band. He's a dud. It's going to be all over him like Ross. He got something to say. I agree. <laughs> so we're going higher. I'm going to agree with Sonny. Okay, 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 okay. Now, on the flip side for Kelly Olynyk, he averages 12.6 points a game. You're going to go higher or lower? I know. I was thinking, um, I think he's going to go lower. Lower than 12? Yeah. I think it's going to be good competition. I think he's going to strive for the, for the best. I think I'm going to go higher on this, this one, 12.6. Okay. EFN. I want to hear everybody else's thoughts. Okay, Sonny. <laughs> I say he goes higher because most of Toronto's players, the last game of the year, they're all on vacation. This guy's going to get a lot of playing time. He shoots three pointers. <laughs> and he's going against you know, his ex team, Miami Heat. Wow. He's going higher than 12 points. I'm he got impressed. something to prove. <laughs> I'm impressed. All right. I'm impressed, Sonny. Right. I got him going higher, too. This is no oh. cocaine, Sonny. Thank you. Hey! 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 What did he say? No, I, I like what Sonny okay, says. Okay, okay. I, I think he, he'll be able to score 13 points. Okay. I think. He's a pretty good offensive sure. player. It's his defense you got to worry about. Okay. okay. I agree. Now, now, in regards of him playing the same position as Bam, but his rebound is only 5.3. It's a little low. So it will be higher or lower than 5.3 rebounds. White yeah, man can't jump. He 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 won't he won't get more than five. He's not a rebound. Bam is going. He, he, he really can't. Like he's like two left feet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I hear you. God. So we're going higher or lower, Zim? You know? Which one's the worst one? Lower. Lower. All right, we'll go with. <laughs> well, yeah, lower. lower. <laughs> this is underdog fantasy. He so. doesn't believe in him, so he's going lower. Yeah. Yeah. Sonny? He's going to get a lot of minutes. You can't be seven foot for no reason. You're going to get five rebounds. He's stiff. He's stiff, though. Mm -hmm. Higher, 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 higher. For higher, those higher, that don't understand, higher, what's stiff? Higher than five. Wait, but isn't that his average? Yes. Five so how, that's not higher. During the regular season, but with all the guys sitting out on vacation early. Somebody's going to play. play. Somebody's going to be playing. He's a starter. He's, he's not going to be the only one out there. Yeah, for real. It's a one-man team. One-man man. He's the biggest guy. He's the biggest guy. He's the tallest guy. He's going to get his five and a half. Higher. Excuse me. And oh, higher or lower? I think he'll go higher. I think he's gonna yeah. go higher. That's cool. Now, we're gonna jump right into the shooting guards. 
We got ex Nick RJ Barry. He is now with Toronto. I like him. He averages like twenty one like point three points a game. Will he be higher or lower? He played for. And it's against the Heat. He did yes. with Zion. Uh, yes. I'm going to say lower. Oof. I'm going to say lower. EFN. I agree. Lower. Sonny. Diego. That guy let me down with New York so many times. <laughs> He's a dud, too. They don't even belong. Those are scrubs right yeah. there. Man, no, you don't no, got to take a person on this guy. Yeah, no, 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 no. Some Duke. And what did he right, do for he the Knicks? He went over there with Quigley. And if he and didn't have Zion, was, he would have was a nothing. big trade with Quigley. And when he got there, he was getting his points. I think it's going to be higher. He can't play okay. under the lights. And I'm riding with Zeno on this one. Yeah. Higher than 21. Yeah. Point three because they got a point to prove, man. Yeah. They got to end the season some positivity going into the summer because they're not in the play. And he's from Canada. And he's from Canada. Oh, wow. With Kelly. He, he's Steve Where Nash's godson, head? right? Lower. He's now, Steve Nash's godson or something. Yes. He's still a scrub. Well, he, yes. he's, he's yes. not Steve Nash's godson. <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. said that. Yeah, yeah. That's a lie. Yeah. 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 Ye
I think that DeRozan's gonna have a great game, but I think everybody else sucks on the Chicago. The whole squad stinks. You don't even know that nobody on it but they DeMar DeRozan. Michael Jordan back to be. Yeah, they haven't won since Jordan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think Daniel might get beef off of this, these segments. <laughs> I say lower as well. God. Hate yeah. fan mail. Hate, hate the fan mail. Defense is playing a lot better now too. They have to. Not to mention Brunson scored him another 42 the other day. Ooh. Right. And uh, EFN. Switching up now. With the New York Knicks, they go higher or lower than 112.5. That's their average. Higher. Going into play stats, we got blocks. Will Isaiah Hardison get higher or lower than 1.8? Who? Who? Isaiah, Isaiah Hardison. Hardison. He played it for the, the Knicks. Who the fuck is he? No, he better get he higher. Just, he on. just came over uh, to the Knicks. He got to go he higher. Higher, higher, higher. Alex Caruso from the Bulls go higher or lower than I one like, block. Oh, I like Alex Caruso. Like Caruso. Good. Yeah. Caruso. He's good. He played with the Lakers, but right? But blocking, he's not a blocker. You know what I'm saying? He'll probably get one, so nah. I'm nah. Not. So lower. Lower. He's not getting any blocks. I'm with Z. Lower. I'm not mad at that. I'm with zero All blocks. All right. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. Assists. Jalen Brunson. He Ooh. averages 6.7 assists a game. Now we're talking. Will that go higher or go higher? Yeah, higher. I agree. Right. Higher, higher. He going to shred Chicago's defense. Higher. Higher. I know this chick that Jalen used to talk to. Oh. <laughs> I ain't gonna say no, 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 It's crazy, yo. Oh, Lord. It's crazy how, like, athletes are rappers. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. All right, DeMar DeRozan, he averages 5.3. Higher or lower? Assist, Zeno. Since you said DeMar DeRozan. I think, I think he'll, he'll go higher. He'll go higher. Yeah, he's I, nice. I, I, I like I'm a hater, but I think he'll go higher. Yeah. I agree. Higher. Oh, clean, oh, sweet, clean, sweet. No, I'm going to go lower. The last category, Chicago Bulls, New York Knicks. We have DeMar DeRozan averaging 23.6 points a game. Would he go higher or lower? I'm going to go lower, be- purely because I'm a hater as well. <laughs> we have to, we have to I that. do not want them to win. We see, you have an agenda. You have to have an agenda. <laughs> EFN? I want to hear Sonny's take on this. I think they stop him because the Knicks need the game way more than Chicago. They stop him. He gets less than 24. He, he steps up in Madison Square Garden. He's going to make him step up. I think I'm agreeing. I don't think, I don't think Chicago will win, but I think he's going to have an amazing game. These are the type of games that those that aren't making the playoffs, they just want to mess everything they up. They just want to show. And mm-hmm. it's, right. it's a few more games sense. left. He wants so vacation. So I think he's going to go higher on that one. He's going on vacation. Is it a contract I'm going to go higher season? on that one for DeMar high, DeRozan high. as well. Yeah. And for the last one, the king of New York right now, the king of the Knicks, Jalen Brunson, he's averaging 28.6 points. Would that be higher or lower? Higher for Enno. I have a higher. This guy's been. I got him at 35. Higher. 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 I've been on the. You can take a shot too. I, I, yeah, hell yeah. You can take a shot. We're taking a shot to that? Yeah. Oh, we say both or neither. Yeah, yeah, both or neither. I say neither. I say neither. I say neither. But let me be totally honest because we, yes, got, we, 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 got, we got the streets watching. Yes. I'm not a fan of Trump mm-hmm. because I don't like the way he acts. Right. I'm not in disagreement with all his policies. I mean, when I see cats. Out here acting up in the streets, y'all lucky I ain't president. Mm-hmm. Oh, this shit would be Armageddon. We not gonna let you get in the way of business, cause business messes with everybody's money. Mm-hmm. We can't be in Cali and they ain't letting three people in the stores at a time because they yeah, scared you gonna. Yeah. You know, yeah. we it's can't. That we can't. COVID. We can't have the national guard. Mm-hmm. In the subways the border, of New, New York, York City, and the we can't. Crazy. We can't have. We can't have cats assaulting people on the streets and getting out of jail the same yeah, day. Yeah. We can't Shooting listen. People. Listen, cops. my bodyguard is Dominican. Mm-hmm. I got no, family. I got. I got. I got. I got family members. I, 
My family is from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, Antigua, St. Croix, stuff like that. West Indies. And I got relatives from Puerto Rico. I got I got Puerto Ricans in my family. So I'm saying all of that to say I would never want anybody to say that I don't support immigrants. Because I do. Right. But you got a whole bunch of immigrants that are in this country that are telling people like me, we have to stand in line. How the hell you don't have to stand in line? And how seven and a half million plus immigrants, illegal immigrants come in. Now understand what we mean by illegal immigrants. That means you're coming into the country, you're undocumented, mm -hmm. so they don't know when to find you, where to find your ass when it's time to pay taxes. Mm. But you're pooling some of our resources. And so as a result, what happens is, is that the American taxpayer has to come out of pocket extra to pay for you who came over to the country illegally. Ain't got a problem with you coming here. Right. But we going to know where you at. Mm -hmm. Where you at with your address, phone number, all that. So you going to pay these and damn taxes And it's a national security now. risk. You, yeah. Exactly. And so when you have that going on and you got a president like Joe Biden that's acting like it ain't a crisis, then I got to take history into consideration. And I was on a podcast, Patrick Bet David, just the other day. Mm -hmm. I saw, I saw, and, he, and he brought this up, and he was absolutely right. So John F. Kennedy gets assassinated in 1963, and Lyndon B. Johnson takes over the presidency because John F. JFK is dead. Mm -hmm. And you had a bipartisan group of Republican senators and Democrats, mm -hmm. Dixiecrats, whatever, bringing legislation to the desk for civil rights legislation. Mm. When he signed it in the law, mm -hmm. he said, they uppity. Mm -hmm. These blacks are uppity. They feeling themselves, blah, 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 blah. He said, we got to do this. We got to give them a little. We can't give them too much, but we got to give them a little because if we give them a little, we'll have, their, we'll have the Negroes voting for us for the next 200 years. Mm -hmm. That was his quote, mm -hmm. right? So now, fast forward to the year 2024. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that this immigration quote unquote crisis isn't being utilized for one party or another to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Politicians have been using us forever. Mm -hmm. They've been manipulating us oh, forever. Right. And so when I'm looking at that, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the Democratic Party just letting cats in, mm -hmm. understanding the mayhem that's in the streets and basically facilitating it instead of addressing it with the fervor that it mm -hmm. deserves. Though, mm -hmm. so, bro, you remember this? Mm -hmm. Just a few weeks ago, $53 million in prepaid credit cards for illegal immigrants. You know how many times black people have been looking for prepaid credit cards? Yeah. Huh. Reparations and everything. But you ain't have it for us. But you got $53 million in prepaid credit cards for cats that ain't even citizens in this country? Yo, uh, well, I don't like that. And even so, the money they send to Ukraine. So again, exactly. It's, in, it's billions. 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 But, but the homelessness you can't address. Yeah, still fucked up it's, right it's, down the block. Israel, Hamas. I don't say Israel, Palestinians, because we know that the Palestinians, are, a lot of them are innocent mm -hmm. in terms of what's transpiring. Right, yeah. But Hamas, the terrorist group, and of course, Israel, they going at it and all of this other stuff. I don't get involved in all of that. But what I'm saying is, you funneling money to Israel, you funneling money to the Ukraine, you funneling, funneling prepaid credit cards to illegal immigrants. But black people, Mm -hmm. All behind the eight ball. And so for me, I'm no aficionado of politics, but I'm practical. Mm -hmm. I'm intelligent enough to know what I'm reading. And I'm looking at certain things and I'm saying, wait a minute, I'm a black man in this in this country. I understand what the hell you haven't done for us. I know you've been talking shit for decades, but the fact of the matter is our education system is still up in smoke. Welfare mm -hmm. system is up in, in smoke. You know what opposition in corporate America? When white folks catch a cold, black folks catch pneumonia. Everything mm -hmm. that happens to white folks is worse for black folks. The unemployment rate is below 4%. It's below, it's, it's damn near 3.5% for white people. What is it for black people? It's at 5.6%. We bragging, we happy because it ain't higher. But it's always worse for us. So I look at all of those things and I say to myself, wait a minute, I'm not going to ignore what I'm seeing from the Democratic Party. My problem with Trump mm -hmm. is this. Too damn petty. You're the president of the United States of America. That often. And this brother will go after Kathy Griffin <laughs> yeah, or that. Stephen A. Smith or somebody <laughs> rather, than, rather than, you know, address the shit that really, really goes yeah, on. And, you know, you're That's looking at him and it's like, come on, man. You know, focus, focus, focus. You know, I need to know that if you back in that office, 
You going to govern the country, not just cater to who got you in. Right. Are you going to be the president to all Americans, or is it just to the people who favor you? I remember when John Lewis died. We know what a warrior he was on behalf of our community, the former rep out of Maryland, what have you. We know, you know, we know what he meant for us, okay? He passes away. You don't even want to pay homage to him because you're talking about he never supported me. You see what I'm saying? He it's stuff like McCain, that. Which it's like, is a crazy. Yeah, I know like, you gave crazy. more. I know you gave money to HBCUs. I respect that. I know the economy was looking good before COVID. I know that you, you know, proclaimed to do certain things for black folks and unemployment rate in the black community was 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 low. I get all of that. But the flip side to it, I'm looking at your Supreme Court justices. I'm looking at them rolling back certain things. I'm looking at people who are fantasizing about a time that once was, meaning pre-70s, into the 60s, into the 50s, and you down with that. And what do I take into account from that? I'm looking at the white population that was once in the high 80s. Then it dwindled to the 70s. Now it says 60 and sliding. And they're looking at legal immigrants coming into the country and white folks are worried about themselves not being the majority any longer. Right. You catering to that fear. Mm -hmm. You feeding into it. His which is why Proud that. Boys and mm -hmm. all of these other folks come in and say, so now it's hard for me to look at your politics when I'm worried about life and death situations for the black for black folks throughout this country and for other minorities in this country because I'm not accusing you of fomenting it or anything like that. Like folks try to blame him for the insurrection. Do I think he was provocative? Yes. Do I think he instigated shit? Yes. Do I believe that he called for the vice, but you know, you, you sat up there and they were talking about hang Mike Pence and you didn't do anything about it? Yes. But I also don't believe you should be arrested for it and stuff like that. Because I believe all them damn people out there were adults. Right, grown They weren't people. children. Mm -hmm. They were grown-ass adults who knew not to cross those barriers at the U.S. Capitol. And if they were stupid enough to they do it, title. hell with them. Right. Okay? Yep. And that's true. But I'm looking at you, and I'm wondering. I know people talking about policies. We want a better economy. We want this. We want, we want safer streets. We want, I'm down for that. But... If you the kind of dude that would foster and provoke divisiveness, we ain't got time to worry about all of that stuff when we worried about our lives. You see what I'm saying? And that's the message that I'm trying to do. His politics, I would love for his politics to be debated <laughs> against Biden's politics, who I think has been a prisoner to the progressive left. Oh, yeah. The extreme left. Because that woke stuff, come on, y'all. You know what? Listen. We brothers here, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, blacks, Latinos, all of us are in here. We know how we were raised. Mm -hmm. I said it to Patrick Bed David the other day. I said, my mother voted Democrat. But she was a Republican home. I said she was a conservative, conservative yeah, home. Yeah, a conservative yeah. home. Yeah. Is, I don't give a shit about the laws. This is the law. You will listen to what the hell I have to say. He ain't got no rights. Right. He ain't negotiating. This is my house. Right. And this is what you will do or else. You understand what I'm saying? We understand that. Now everything's a negotiation. Right. Everything's to be understood. Well, you know what? My daughter, I got two daughters. Oh, my daughter, you know, it's nothing wrong with uh, 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 your daughter being in the same bathroom uh, with a person that identifies themselves as a woman, even though they were born a man. Oh, yes, the hell it is. Right. Yes, the hell it is. I don't give a damn what anybody right. says. Now, again, Transgender, whatever. I support gay rights, transgender rights, all that. Dang. Yo, live and let live. live. Your life, yeah. Live and let live. I don't support nobody bothering them, violating their civil rights, their civil liberties. But here's our problem in our society that I think the progressive left has contributed greatly to. They want you to like it. Like, yo, y'all, no, I ain't going to no gay club. I'm not gay. Right. But guess where else I'm not going? I'm not going to some porn shop either. I'm not, I'm not trying to hang out with porn stars or prostitutes either who are heterosexual. Right. I'm not trying to do that. Everybody got a right to like what they like, have their own flavor, and for not to not to. Right. And for you to try to impose that on other people, I can't accuse conservatives of doing that. Right. It's the progressive left that's doing that. So again, Biden's safer. Because we do have an economy that is doing well, even though inflation is bad. But when I look at illegal immigration, 
When I look at the violence in the streets and me being from Hollis, Queens, taking the F train or the E train every day and all of this other shit, and I'm seeing the National Guard in the subways, I can't definitively tell you. Now, I can't vote for Trump, damn it. I just can't because I think that he's too divisive. And if I saw him, I'd tell him to his face. And I can say that because remember, before Trump became president, I was the first person he called when he was trying to buy the Buffalo Bills. I remember. He called me directly. Oh, wow. Oh, called me directly. And he said, I'm trying to, and I tell the story. I've told the story on First Take. I've told the story on my podcast, the Stephen A. Smith Show, on YouTube. I told it everywhere. Trump called me in 2014. He said, yo, Stephen A., <laughs> I want to buy the Buffalo Bills. He said, these bastards look like they're going to get in my way. Quote, if them motherfuckers get in my way, his exact words, I'm not cussing, I'm quoting. Them motherfuckers get in my way, I'm going to get them all. I'm going to run for president. Those were his exact words. And sure enough, he did it. And won. And won. And, won. and, won. and, won. and so what I'm saying is, so what I'm saying is, I remember all of these things. I remember all of these things. And I look at things a little bit differently. You got black folks looking at Trump as racist. I remember I when Trump, I remember when Trump, he was I, remember when, uh, sometime, I remember when Trump was throwing sporting events, Tyson fights and other things at, at Trump Plaza. All of us were there. We didn't think he was that then. Right. We didn't think he was that when we watched The Apprentice. We didn't think he was that when he was when he was at sporting events. But suddenly we think this. Here's what I think about Trump. Trump is a win at all cost kind of yes. dude. And if I got white supremacists to women to to black folks who are conservative and Everything in between. That if that's work. what's going to get me to win, I'll deal with the consequences later. I'm trying to get in <laughs> office. <laughs> he's, I think he's that dude yeah. that it's no moral or principled compass. It's whatever it win. takes to win. And if that's where the most votes are going to come from, win. I'm willing to do that. Now, yeah. other people saying, well, damn it, if he's willing to allow all of that, doesn't that make him racist? Nope. Well, that depends on how you look at how important winning is to somebody. Right. You know, so I don't look at it that way. I think Biden is safer for the country, but I don't know if it's better because of what he has allowed to transpire. And I will say this: and I can said in the past. By say, the way. Well, 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 Biden. Let's let's be, let's let's go Biden's record yeah, on the street. Let, 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 again, I'm no but official. That's a long time ago. I'm no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm going where you're going. Mm -hmm. I ain't no aficionado, mm -hmm. but I ain't stupid, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of decently red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, say not well read, but decently red. I do remember a Joe Biden mm -hmm. with the crime bill mm -hmm. in the '90s. Mm -hmm. I do remember how that led to mass incarceration. Yep. Black now, I do remember the Congressional Black Caucus, the one that was pushing people like him and others to push those bills through. Mm. But I also remember Biden bragging that it was his. Mm. Right. And so when I look at that, along with various other things that he's done, I understand dealing with segregationists. It was a different time, 70s, 80s. You know, you had to work with everybody and go across the aisle and all of that other stuff. But did you have to have those smiles on your face when you did it? Mm. Mm. Did you have to look and seem so comfortable? Mm. Did you have to, you know, speak so vociferously right. on the behalf of them and others? When you talk about racism, I hate when our community, specifically the black community, calls out Republicans for being racist without calling out Dems. Mm. Last time I checked, there was a senator that died at the age of 97. His name was Robert Byrd out of West Virginia. He's a member and a leader in the Ku Klux Klan. He's a Democrat. He was a Democrat. Well, they were the original. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 you go going back to the Jim Crow era. Right. So, when you see stuff like that, I understand times have changed, but you're still asking me when you identify the conservative right as racist to assume you're not. Mm -hmm. Who the hell are you to tell me you're not? Mm -hmm. Let me be the judge of that. Right. What do you do? What do you foster? What level of dependency? Now, we talk about black leaders throughout history in this country. You understand from Marcus Garvey to, 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 to Martin Luther King and beyond. 
always preaching about economic empowerment. Mm. The Democratic Party preaches about government dependency. The government, the government, the government. Here we are. We'll look out for you, blah, 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 blah. All kind of stuff. So I'm mindful of that, and I pay attention to that. And the challenge for me, and I explained this the other day on that podcast that I was on, the reason why you don't see me so definitive and finite about those things is because I don't know. I could be in front of a Democrat and give him these facts, and this is their position, and give the same identical facts to somebody on the conservative side five minutes later, and they have two different spins. Right. And neither are wrong. That's very confusing to a sports guy mm -hmm. that gets to look at a champion mm -hmm. compared to a wannabe. Mm -hmm. That chance to look at a champion compared to a contender. Mm -hmm. I have finite results to lean on. When I talk about LeBron against MJ, I got finite results. Mm -hmm. When I talk about D-Wade compared to Kobe or somebody, finite results. When I talk about Ray Allen versus Steph Curry and others, finite results. Politics doesn't grant me that. Mm -hmm. So when I speak, I speak with caution. Because what I'm saying is, this is how it looks. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But let me tell my community what I think based on this evidence. When I see the attorney general, a sister, Letitia James, in New York City going after Trump. Yeah, you're going after Trump. I got that. Yeah, he's a real estate agent that, you know, bloated his earnings and his, his valuation. You know, all of that stuff happens. Then I turn it on CNN. And I see a real estate dude saying, we do that all the time. And he, he said, I do it. Everyone does it. What is she talking about? I'm like, well, damn. You know, I don't know because I'm not a real estate guy. You know, I'm not a real estate mogul. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, you find these nuggets. And I'm one of those dudes. I read the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, LA Times, New York Daily News, New York Times. I go online. I read Political and the Drudge Report. I watch Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, News Nation with Cuomo. Hell, I had to, uh, Cuomo Nation, Cuomo News Nation. Oh, want me tonight yeah. CNN <laughs> want me next week mm. Sean Hannity and I have known each other for 20 years mm. 20 years uh -huh. you know what I'm saying so I'm like I'm getting all of this and sometimes people are looking at me and I'm looking at cats and they go on these podcasts or they got this shit to say and I'm like this yeah you would think that about me your ass ain't talking to nobody mm. I talk to everybody. Right. So I'm getting information all from all sides. Right. You know what I'm saying? We just, just today, there was news in the paper. Minnesota Timberwolves, A-Rod, mm. and ownership, and the deal has fallen right. apart. Right? All of this other stuff. No, it hasn't. <laughs> you reading reports. I'm on the phone with somebody reading me the contract. Mm, 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 mm. There's levels to this. Mm, mm. I saw that. You understand? I'm sitting there like, I'm sitting there like, I'm sitting there like, I'm sitting there like well, wait a minute. They backed out. New York Post writes, there's no deal. It's over. Mm -hmm. Mark Laurie has backed out and he doesn't want to work with A-Rod. But the fine language said, they signed on to acquire 60% of the majority stake of the franchise for $1.5 Billion. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. Billion. I apologize. Billion. Mm -hmm. They've already given $600 million. They don't get it back. Mm. They owe another $300 million, which they had to give them Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Right? Logically, you walking away... After you gave up $600 million mm. that you can't get back? Mm. When all you owe is another three? Mm -hmm. And by the way, you made the deal for $1.5 billion, but the franchise billion? is now worth $3 billion, probably with <laughs> Forbes right. next week when mm. they come out with their list, it's going right. to be worth $3 billion, right. which makes your $900 million dollar investment worth $1.8 right. billion. Right. You walking away from that? That report don't make no sense. Right? right? Yep. Well, it does make sense to them. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't have the contract. Right. Mm. I have the contract. Mm. That's the difference. So when I'm watching cats talking, I'm just sitting there. And I'm like... You're like, they're just I'm like, talking. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, you know, keep talking. <laughs> keep talking. Because once again, it's got to be about receipts. When we're talking about politics, all right, well, fine. Did you get a call from the White House before? Mm. Did you get a call... From former presidents and senators and 
congressmen, present senators and congressmen. Ooh. I did. I, I do. Follow. I think he got a follow. So all of this, <laughs> so all of this, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm watching. Obama follow me on I'm, Twitter. I'm watching people. I'm watching <laughs> people <laughs> talk. And I'm like, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to ignore the fact that I've been around for 30 years. <laughs> and I kind of know this shit. Right. I'm not talking about, when we talk about the nuance of politics and stuff like that, I'm talking about people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm talking about people who know where the information is, who have the information, who give you the information. Do they do that? I do. And that's the difference. I'm going to say one more thing and we're going to get back to quick time with slime. Sure. And I'm going to I'm going I'm right. to I'm going to relate this to the most simplistic I got about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, right, so most simplistic form there is. I don't know politics. Right. I'm asking you. That's why you, I don't know if you notice. I'm like the quietest sure. as you as you're talking because I feel like it, I know you say you're not an expert, but you 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 have experts breakdowns. If we was to go to war with Kim Jong Un, what's that? North Korea. Kim Jong Un. Right? Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. Who is scary to me? He is. He should be scary. Any he's, dictator he's, should be scary. He's scary to me. And I gotta pick Joe or Trump I feel like Trump is going to be like fuck that let's go to war I agree I, I, well <laughs> I feel like Trump he, is coming he, outside he, well, well, his, but his, Trump his, is actually anti-war actually right, right. But, 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 let me, but, but, but Joe Biden I feel like he's staying home he's like we're doing it later we're doing it on Thursday but, but here's the problem when it comes to the presidency you can't just look at the individual you have to look at who they're surrounding themselves with yeah the cabinet and that cabinet is very, very important because when I think about Joe Biden, I think about people like Obama and others quietly behind the scenes mm -hmm. impacting decisions. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, I trust it a little bit more. Okay. Whereas Trump, I do believe he has the advantage with the fear factor. He's a wild card. Yeah. And because you know he's a wild card, he might he scares you a bit more mm -hmm. if you're the opposition. You're the op I'll give him that. But does that mean he'll make the best decision? Because I don't said, I don't oh, yeah. know. You said you said Petty. That's kind of like why I like him. Because he would go at Kim Jong un and Rosie O'Donnell the same day. True. <laughs> True. But that's not but, very but, presidential. But, hey, man. But, who gives a fuck about being president? I mean, on, on an international stage, that matters. I, I, I will tell you this. On an international stage, your rhetoric matters almost yeah. as much as your actions. Mm -hmm. okay. Because rhetoric provokes action. Right. Okay. And, for example, something you may not have known. I remember when I saw um, Pierce Morgan. He was on... The Breakfast Club with Charlemagne and DJ Envy. Um, and he said, did you know that Barack Obama deported more immigrants than Trump? Oh, I did not know that. He did. Mm -hmm. Did. Wow. By a significant margin. Wow. He just didn't advertise <laughs> it. He just did it. If Trump would have did it, he'd be like, I'll send them back. No, if Trump had done it. Mm -hmm you would have had riots going on all over the place and what have you because people would have leaned on him challenging his racial sensitivity or lack the thereof because of the way he talks. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, we can't sit idly by and ignore that from the president. That's why for okay. me, character matters at the presidency. I'm the kind of person, I don't want one party to have any rule. Because I don't trust either side. Yeah. That's why I'm a registered independent. But what I would do is whatever parties in the presidency, I would want a vast majority in the House or the Senate. We got to have checks and balances. Mm. I don't want the Democrats having the White House, the Senate, and the Congress. Right. I don't want Republicans having the White House, the Senate, and the Congress. One of them, if not both of them, got to be able to stop your ass. That's me. If Trump could come back, can Obama come back? No, I don't bro. think he can. He did two, two terms. terms. He did two oh, terms. Right. I will tell you this, though. I will tell you this, though. And I want to pause for a second. I'm going to use the bathroom. Yeah. But Michelle Obama was smoke Trump. And oh, I will. Yeah. She should. That's we need her to run. But she, that's no, the she, would, she, would, she, she would win, in my opinion. No, in my won't. opinion, she would win hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Hands but down. I'm hands at down. a point right now where I believe she's the only one wow. who would win. And when I look at the Democratic Party, Here's what, and I've said this many times, they are an absolute embarrassment. Yep. When you saw Joe Biden show up at the State of the Union address, ladies and gentlemen, he is 81 years old. 
And we had a bunch of people in there chanting four more years. That's great. They ain't chanting four more years for people in their 60s. Yeah. <laughs> but they chant four more years for a dude that's going to be 82 when we go to the polls in November. Mm. Talking about four more years. That is disgraceful. I understand he could pass away ultimately and that Kamala Harris ultimately would be inserted into that. I get that part. And stop giggling. Uh, yeah, and stop yeah, giggling yeah, yeah, when yeah. they ask you tough questions, mm -hmm. Kamala. Mm -hmm. I respect our vice president. I respect the education. Howard University grad, HBCU. Much love to you. I know she's an intelligent woman. She's the former attorney general of the state of California and obviously San Francisco before that, even though you were putting a bunch of brothers away from yeah, nonviolent crimes. Fact. I get all of that. I understand it, but here's the point. Stop giggling all the damn time when they ask you a tough question mm -hmm. because it's an evasive tactic that turns people off because we think you're not sure of the answer and you're trying to buy time. That is not attractive, period. But getting back to what my point was, when you talk about Biden or you talk about the Democratic Party, by chanting four more years, all you've done is say, we have no one we believe can beat Trump. All this lawfare, all these lawsuits and everybody, you don't have anybody that could beat them. You had since 2016. Mm. You had eight years. Our best and you been. still can't beat him. He had four indictments, <laughs> 91 counts. Because He's been impeached twice, okay? He had a $454 million judgment leveled against him. You got more cases coming down the pike. What are they doing? They going after him for paying hush money to a former porn star. So I got some ass. And I don't want to tell nobody. So I gave you hush money. Right. That's why they going after the presumptive GOP nominee. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at stuff like that, I'm like, damn, what are you doing? Can you beat him or can't you? Mm. I want somebody who can beat him. Mm -hmm. I would love for Kamala Harris to be able to beat him. She can't beat Trump in an election. Correct. I would love for Gavin Newsom to be able to beat nah. the governor of California. Oh, California. You can't. You can't do it. You can't do it. How about Corey? You can't do it. New Jersey. Booker, Corey Booker. Yeah. No, I don't think you can. I mean, you know what? He doesn't resonate. I respect that man. I respect his knowledge. I respect his knowledge. I respect everything about him. But he cannot. He cannot. Wow beat Trump in an election. Ooh, no. And so I'm looking at it from that standpoint and I'm like, all the stuff you've been telling us, you got nobody to beat this man. Mm. What have you been doing for eight years? Mm. What have you been doing? Mm. Mm. Think about, I got people that rolling up on me asking me to run. You, you, you run in 2028? I'm like, never. I like my life. Hell, I want to mess oh, yeah, with this for. We got no everything. interest. I don't know why the hell would they they would come to me. I ain't qualified for it. But then again, neither was he in a lot of people's Man, eyes. Was, but I, I, I have see you and DL Hughley running I, for the I program. have. No, nah, I respect the hell out of DL yeah, Hughley, by the way. But I think that the, the you know you got to know how to smile and laugh and have a good time. You know, you got to bring that comedic side out of you if you DL Hughley, yeah, yeah, because right yeah. now he's become such an activist yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that that yeah, that that yeah. he you know you you might have wife going like this. He'll get in the office and forget about us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna be thinking about us. And that's the problem Thank with DL. But I respect him. He's very knowledgeable. I respect the hell out of him. But I would tell you, for me personally, I've joked that I would want to debate Trump. And the reason why I would want to debate Trump is because when he's debating you, he ain't talking about nothing substantive. He's too busy trying to throw insults. And I'd be ready for that. But he's but wait, be ready for that. wait, you don't think that it's such a joke right now because both parties serve the same interests? It, they're just exactly. making us all think. That I don't. Two I don't think. I don't think they serve the same. You don't interest. think so? Like I think they. Have, don't... I think they have different lobbyists and different interests. They what they are serving, and we're all being utilized as pawns. Right. That's the commonality. We're pawns, but we. The, the, but here's. But here's where black folks. This is where we have to hold ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. Since Lyndon B. Johnson in '64. The Democratic Party has received over 90% of our vote. Mm -hmm. Understand what that means. On one side, you're saying you got us. Mm -hmm. We going to support you no matter what. So they don't have to take care of us. They just give us lip service every four years. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you got a Republican Party who not only knows you're not going to support them, but resents you for it because you they believe you're not giving them their just due mm -hmm. in the role that they played to bring a civil rights legislation to the desk of the Democratic incumbent. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So as a result, they look at folks, you're not well read, you don't know your history, you're supporting the wrong party, this is just some ignorant stuff that you're doing. And so when I've when I've spoken at speeches, I've said it half jokingly, but I said my dream is for one election, maybe not this one, but for one election for everybody, every black person in America to vote Republican. And they said, what? What? Why would you say that? I said, because it'll send the message that I vote is not you have it, it is for sale. It's not good. You can't take it for granted. Flatter me. What you going to do for me when I go to buy a house? I ain't just buying. I, I want to be. I, listen, I'm thinking about being in Miami, bro. Yeah. No state income tax. Come this what I'm thinking down. about, it, right? Mm-hmm. Come I am down. not buying a house without looking at the damn house mm-hmm. multiple times. Right. I'm not buying a car without test driving it. Yep. I'm not buying clothes without trying it on and seeing how it looks on me. Yep. Inspect the merchandise before you commit. We do it every day, <coughs> except for when it comes Politics. to politics. Mm-hmm. We don't do it, and as a result. We've pigeonholed ourselves because we've ensured that we'll be a disenfranchised community devoid of representation because one party's giving a list service and somebody's saying, screw screw y'all because y'all should be more supportive of us and you're not. Therefore, nobody's fighting on our behalf. Do you realize that right now with the immigration crisis, the Hispanics in this country get more attention than us? Xenophobia is more popular than racism. Homophobia is more popular than racism. Transphobia has become or is becoming more popular than racism. Black folks been here forever. And we at the bottom of the freaking food chain. Getting treated the worst. Getting treated, getting disregarded basically. Because we haven't created an environment that insists upon representation. Because we've been too transparent. I might know who I'm going to vote for, but I'll always leave open the possibility to change my mind just so you could give me the effort to get my vote before I decide which direction I'm going to go in, just so I don't be transparent. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to take it there. Okay. Colin Kaepernick. Yes, sir. I always see you say that you, like, we spent. Establishing this whole time yep. that you have a lot of inside information. A lot of folks is not privy to yep. that information. Right. So, is it true that it was a workout that was called and he went an hour away? Hour and twenty minutes. Why? Stupid. That's why. Wow. And and, and <clears throat> look, when I was, sh- I showed up to a radio show, mm-hmm. one hundred five, I believe, one hundred five point three in New York City. Okay. And some cat rolled up on me, and I didn't even notice right. that there was a slew of them there wearing Cap- Cap- Kaepernick shirts, supporting them. And I'm not going to tell you the brother disrespected me because I extended my hand to shake his hand, and he shook my hand. He said, but I'm not feeling you, dog. He said, we got a problem with you and your position on Kaepernick. I said, who got a problem with me? Mm-hmm. And his fiance. Mm. Was sitting right, okay, was sitting right in that room, it's like standing there kneeling over, whatever. He was like, "So you know, you know I mean, if you feel the way you feel, you willing to come talk to her?" I said, "Right now, let's go." Right. And just so you know, for the record, that's who I am. You know, what I'm saying you got a problem with me, tell me when and where. I'll show up. That's how I roll. If right. I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. If I'm right, I ain't budging. Right. It's just that simple. Right. So. We went in there and we were talking and she had her position. And I said, yeah, that's what you say. Mm. But the league says something else. Mm. She said, but we know the facts. It's us. I said, well, it's about them too. And they got their own facts. Mm. And we cover the league and all I see is Kaepernick hiding Mm. behind you. Mm. You here. Where he at? Mm. He didn't talk. Where he at? time he didn't talk. I said, his woman speaking for him? I said, I'm sorry. Where I'm from? Mm -hmm. It don't work like that. Mm -hmm. I said, but I'll tell you what I'll do. Mm -hmm. From this day forward, you have my number. That's real. You can text me. Anything that you text to me that you want me to say, I will say verbatim Mm -hmm. over Mm -hmm. national television. Mm -hmm. Even if I had to read the damn quote myself. Mm -hmm. You have my word. You have my word. 
So old, over time, we were talking, communicating, and they wanted me, my help, in helping him get back into the league. Mm. I had been on the record. He had been blackballed. It's unfair. It ain't right. But in the same breath, you got to know who you're dealing with. It's the NFL. And it's 32 different owners that are billionaires. And they ain't going to let you mess with their paper. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the smartest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you were wrong. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't smart if you really, really wanted to be in the league. Because mm -hmm. they're going to do what they can to get you out of there. So I go on the air because we find out about that workout right. that the NFL had conducted. And the NFL conducted the workout because no individual team wanted to because they were scared if he worked out for them. Right. And then it didn't work out. They were, he would accuse them of being racist. Mm -hmm. So the league, at the behest of Jay-Z and others, took the position, we will conduct the right workout. Which they don't do. They, which they don't do. The league never conducts an individual workout for a player. Right. And at that time, I was told by sources directly related to the negotiations, he'll have to throw the ball into the stands to not have a job in two weeks. Wow. And his lady and him, remember, had been asking me to help him get a tryout with one team. Mm. I said they reporting initially as three teams and stuff like that. I said, no. Nah. I'm being told 22 to 24 teams going to show up. And it ended up being 26. Wow. I'm being told that most of the dudes showing up are in the player personnel departments for NFL teams and they African Americans. Mm. So you're going to have brothers oh, mm. looking at you, mm. at least 18 to 19 of them. And they hemmed and hard, and then all of a sudden, I wasn't getting no return text. He switched the workout two hours? I, I, I wasn't getting any return text oh. suddenly. Wow. And they. You know, I was on a air with one of my, uh, the, the opposite of me was Max Kellerman at the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, he getting a text message from them showing the waiver that the NFL had drawn up. And saying, I don't blame him for one bit for not doing this or blah, blah, blah. I said, well, damn it, I do. Because you ain't the only one that got the waiver. Mm -hmm. I got it too. And oh, by the way, were you on the phone with general counsel for the NFL 30 minutes ago? Because I am. I was. Wow. And they said, quote us. Well, no off the record shit. Mm -hmm. They quote us. Yeah, we changed the language in the waiver. <laughs> because we've never done an individual workout for a player before. And he had just sued us. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we just settled the case. Yeah. So why would we not protect ourselves? Of course we did to change the language. Wow. To make sure he can't sue us if he doesn't get back <laughs> in because nobody wants him. Wow. But we're willing to give him the workout at a NFL professional facility, which was that of the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. And on top of it all, we'll give him the tape so he could circulate the tape to, to other teams, to other teams oh, wow. anytime he wants. Wow. This brother didn't show up. And a couple of hours before the workout, moved the damn workout an hour and 20 high minutes school. away to a high school football stadium outside of Atlanta. I said, I'm done. I'm done with y'all. I said, you don't want to play. You want to be a martyr. Right. You want to be a martyr. If you want to play football, you let that work out. Right. 26 NFL teams, 18 of them African-American, showing up with all the technological equipment that an NFL team has to dissect and pick apart Can you what you bring to the table and you don't show up, I'm done with you. You don't want to play. You want to be a martyr. Okay. Fine, be a martyr. We appreciate you taking the knee. We appreciate you fighting on behalf of African American, black and brown people everywhere because police brutality was is a real thing. Right. Yeah, brutality on the part of some police officers is what I call it. We've got brothers and sisters on the police force that are black and brown that ain't doing that. So I'm not gonna say all police officers, right. but some of them are. So I'm looking at all of that and I'm like, I appreciate that. But this ain't about that. This is about you saying you wanted to play and galvanizing folks to support you playing. You ain't playing years. Yep. They want to see you work out. And you didn't show up. I'm done. Yeah. And I've been done with that story ever since. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you about Russell Westbrook and y'all little back and Russell forth. Westbrook. I ain't no right back and forth with Russell Westbrook. I told this motherfucker about No, no, it. Russell Westbrook. No, not Russell Westbrook. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no. Told Kyrie. Kyrie, but it wasn't Russell Westbrook. Yo, Rosman. You know, he's on the Lakers and you say you just keep, you know, you downplayed his, 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 his 
game. That I downplayed his game? Oh, okay, okay. Well, that to me is not, you know, I, I get that. And the back and forth. Look, Russell Westbrook is a real one. Mm -hmm. yes. That brother's a real one. And I, what I mean by that is he is a brother to the core. Mm -hmm. Loves his people, does so much great work in the community, the whole nine. I got mad love and respect. And he's a real, he ain't no fake mm -mm. cat. He mm -hmm. motherfucker don't like you, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, he real like he's that. LA dude. I, I respect the hell out of him. He's one of my favorite people. Right. But he can't shoot. Right. And damn it, that's what I said. Right. I said it then. I'm telling you now. He do, I want him taking it to the rack. Right. I don't want him shooting 25 feet jump shot. Right. No. Is that a crime? No. That's not a crime. Right. Now, me and Kyrie were different. Right. Kyrie, that was some personal shit. Mm. That's between he and I. Okay, I didn't know that was. Where I looked out. Okay. And he forgot. Mm. And that's why when he went on Twitter last year and he was talking his shit, I was like, how about me, me, and me and you meet one-on-one -on -one for the public to spot your truth against my truth and see how that works out for you? Mm -hmm. I'll never tell, but pump your brakes. Mm. But he was right, went too far. Because mm -hmm. I got mad respect and love for the brother and... It got to a point where me and his father was getting into it, right? And his father, his father jumped in, tweets, blah, 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 not tweet, but but uh, text messages to my private phone, all of this other stuff. And it was my fault because I took it a little too far with it. pops, not on public, but oh, wow. I took a bit too personal with pops. And so Kyrie rolled up and was like, "It ain't even about me at this point. It's about you and pops." And I said, "You know what? You're right." I immediately picked up the phone with his father. He and his, well, his father and I met in New York City. Right. Made amends. We cool to this day. I apologize. He apologized. We grown ass men. We good. Right. But in terms of Kyrie, marvelous magician. Brother, brother's just all world. All I ever wanted from Kyrie is to be on the damn court. Because right. he's spectacular. Yeah. He's spectacular. You know what I'm saying? One of the greatest talents this game has ever seen. I, it's not about taking the vaccine. <laughs> it was about every time there was always a damn excuse for something. Mm -hmm. It's an injury this month. It, 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 it's something with your religion this way. It's the vaccine here. It's, 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 damn it, get on the court. Right. You're too great right. for us to be hearing about. You. Listen, I appreciate the fact that you supplied the Palestinians with a bunch of water. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is before all of this stuff that's been going on lately. Right. I appreciate the stuff yeah. that you've done for the WNBA. He's very philanthropic. He's very charitable. Kyrie's a good brother. Mm -hmm. I even went on the air when we were butting heads and I said, yo, y'all, that's between me and him. Mm. That doesn't mean he's not a good brother. He is a good brother. We just don't like each other right now. <laughs> That's all right. That happens. Beautiful but please stuff. understand, yeah. I know he's a good brother. Russell Westbrook don't, don't F with the media. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But if he honest, I've always been fair to Russ. Right. You understand? Know we ain't friends. We ain't going to be friends because you don't like the media that way. LeBron going to feel the way he going to feel. Plenty of other players, but most players in all professional sports, I'm very cool with. The ones that have a problem with me are the ones that don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. Because if you talk to me, you ain't going to have no problem. Because guess what? I'm either going to be right or I'm going to be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to admit it. Not privately, publicly. I'm not going to say something to you about you publicly. And I'm wrong. And then privately, I'm right. going to apologize. Nah, y'all see me do it. I'll go on the air. My bad. I was wrong. You see what I'm saying? But if I'm right, I ain't budging. This is where I stand. And so if you one of those cats, you got a lot of brothers. They chirp. They talk. Mm -hmm. And it's real, real easy to talk shit about me <laughs> when you're talking to somebody else. else. Yes. But when you're talking True. in front of my face right. and I get a chance to respond with my truth, mm. I ask one simple question. Have you encountered any of them that have said they're willing to do that? Mm -hmm. You ain't seen nary one of them because they know. I they think, know. I think that's the reason why you and Michael Jordan get along is because y'all both don't accept betrayal. Like, as soon as someone kind of like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like y'all the same. Right. Like, when it comes to that, I think right. that's the reason why. I don't think so. Right. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think, don't accept it. I don't think that's it. I think that, again, it's like, yo, brother, I'm not a black man. I'm a brother. Mm -hmm. I love my people. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I think about, 
you know, I, listen, I'm not anti anything. I'm not anti white. But when I think about immigrants, when I think about Latinos, Hispanics in this country and, and, and black folks, to me, we all the same. We brothers. We in the same plight, you know, and I'm always look out. Mm-hmm. But sometimes looking out ain't telling you what you want to hear. It's telling you what you need to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. you got cats that because of that, they try to paint a picture and create this imagery about you so others will see you in a certain way. Mm. And I'm like, that's jacked up. That's really messed up. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. Keep doing what you're doing because as sooner or as later, you're going to have to deal with me because mm-hmm. I'm not going away. And that's how I roll with it. It's like, you're not going to... I remember everything. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and like I told you at the beginning, you got cats in the league. Yo, bro, they, they, they talking about me. I'm talking about corporate America. I'm talking about Hollywood. I'm talking about Madison Avenue. Or they talking a lot of shit. And they don't know who I know and how it gets back to me. But it all gets back to me. I'm waiting for the Stephen A movie and the documentary. But let me just... Yes. Because it's still quick time. It's not. Rihanna or Beyonce? Beyonce all day. Okay. Listen, Navy, Blue Navy. First of all, I didn't know what the hell Blue Navy was until last year. Okay, let me get that straight. <laughs> Secondly, I want to emphasize this. I love me some... Riri? Re, I love Rihanna. I buy her music. I paid for it. I ain't get the shit for free. Right. I paid for it. The whole bit. She's phenomenal. Okay? I love her. Right. I appreciate her the whole bit. And when I compared her to Beyonce on the Sherry Shepard show yes. that pissed a few people off. Oh, no. You were they was pissed off. What <laughs> happened was is that I was promoting my book. Okay. And Sherry Shepard said, we need you to come on here. We want to create a first take atmosphere. Mm. So we want to create a debate. And I know that you are a supporter of Beyonce. So feel free to bring that up. And then they talked about Riri performing at the Super Bowl. And I'm like, yo, you, you, you saw what Beyonce did. You got to measure up. Because this is Beyonce. <laughs> you understand? Now, let me be very, very clear. <laughs> that was a I went to the Taylor Swift concert. She was off the chain. $2,000 a ticket. My daughter made you. Your daughter. Both my daughters <laughs> made me <laughs> and promised their 10 friends. I said, $20,000, bro. <laughs> I, said, $20, I need a drink. I need a drink. <laughs> But you enjoyed yourself. Yo, bro, I couldn't I could not believe how much fun I had. I said, Taylor Swift off the chain. <laughs> she did she did she did that thing. Yeah, Taylor Swift the shit. I mean she got But she that got don't it. mean 20, she be on oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, can we calm down? Pump the brakes. <laughs> There's only one right. Beyonce. Right. You understand? Nobody in the planet of Stephen A. Smith. There is no female artist ever that has got, and I love to meet some Janet Jackson. Control and Rhythm Nation, Control. come on, dog. Yeah, yeah. Control and Rhythm Nation, I mean, please. I, I love Penny. I, 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 good time. You understand Penny what I'm saying? Good time. Yeah. Aretha yeah. Franklin, I mean, yeah. listen, the Queen of Soul, I mean, the, Mary J, uh, Queen Latina, I mean, come on. Mm. Nobody. Nobody. Yes, her too. Not even Whitney. Nobody. Not Lisa Keys. Whitney. Lisa Keys. Whitney. Whitney's phenomenal. Oh, I mean, come on. Whitney. Whitney. Nobody. Right. To me. I'm talking about to me. Right. right. Nobody. Right. That's fair. Ever. That's fair. Comes before Beyonce. Mm. So it's just an example of what I'm talking about. So you're there's, the beehive. There's, you're, you're the beehive. Yeah, you're the no, beehive. No, 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 because I don't act like that. You ain't joining. I don't act like that. You ain't want to join the game. I don't act like that. Yo, he got, he got, I don't act like that. I don't act like that. But, but let me tell you this. But let me tell you this. You understand? I ain't a quote unquote member of the beehive. But if I was going to be a member of a hive, it would be the beehive. <laughs> Beyonce, Beyonce is so bad, as in great. Right. I wouldn't mind them calling me Stephen B. Smith. <laughs> I mean that shit. <laughs> ain't nobody Beyonce. Ain't nobody Beyonce. To me, ain't nobody Beyonce. Uh, yo, yo, Steve, let me just say thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we gotta do you this were again. everything we this that again. I thought you would be right, right. and more. You and more. superseded my expectations. Yeah. You are exactly who you are, and, and like I said, I can speak to you all day. Like yeah. this, this, this might have been a seventeen-hour podcast. L- listen, yeah, bro. Yo, let me give you, let me give you a props. Yeah, right. I, I, I wanted to stay on you. Right. You know why? Because this is this should be uh, a, a promoted more. Like you know, us is bigging up each other. Right. You great. 
whether you came and did drink chefs or not, you great. Yeah, you were right. one of the, you know one of the greatest out there. Right. I wanted to thank you. I wanted. To, I was so impressed, so happy that when we finally booked you, I was like, "What? Stephen Hayes coming?" Now we honored to I was, have you here. I, was, I couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> like I was just like I was because right, right. because I always want to give you your props. I always want to tell you how how dope you are, how how ill it is. And I I'll end it with this one story. Yep. You gave you gave me one of the most humblest pies ever. Mm. We was in Complex Con. I walked through and I watched you so much mm -hmm. that I thought I'd met you before and right. I had never met you. Right. And I walked up on Stephen A. I was like, ah! And Stephen A was like, calm down. <laughs> 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 like, no, we was in a we was in an environment. I don't even want to say to the people that was there. You know, it was a lot of big, big dogs right. there. And I you made my fans make sense. Now let me make yeah. that make sense. Right. For years, for I've been famous. 25 years, 23 of them, which has been great. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. But fans will come up to me and they'll talk to me. Right. And what I realized is they thought they knew me. Yeah, talk to you like they knew you. Right. They thought, and I did that to you. <laughs> <laughs> and you, was, you, you, you almost was looking out for me. You was like, you're a little too groupied out, Nori. You didn't say that. Right. Your eyes did. You right. was like, oh, calm down, calm down. But I will never take that moment back because I meant it. I mean it then, right. and I mean it now. I appreciate it. It takes nothing away from me as a man That's right. to tell you how great you are Thanks, to your man. motherfucking face and mean it. Right. It does not take away from me as a fan. I want you to continue to do what you do. If you ever need us, I appreciate on that. Any yeah. show you got, because I know you got right. fifteen thousand right. shows. Right. <laughs> right. you got I'm gonna get y'all on, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you producing shows, you you being an executive producer right. and producing shows. That shit is so dope, man. We appreciate you. This is superseded. Well, listen, man. Let me say. Let me, let me yes. say this, man. First of all, I'm honored to be on the show. I think y'all do a great job. I Thank love you. the fact that y'all been celebrating. You've been doing this for eight years. Yes. Um, you've been very, very successful at it. Yes. You know, you you set the stage. You set the stage for a lot of people, and you've given a lot of people an opportunity to really, really do their thing, making them feel comfortable asking the right questions and doing all of that stuff. And the biggest thing that y'all preaching about is togetherness, man. Listen, yep. when I heard Kendrick and Drake and J Cole, I went on my pockets and I like yo as long as it's non-violent yeah. mm -hmm. go ahead with the lyrics that's yeah. part of the business the whole bit but as long as it's not just keep it safe and the whole bit there's money to be made out here for all of us right. some gonna make more than others but that ain't the point the point is right. we could all live well we could always make it happen and for me personally you know one of the things that I do religiously is I go on a lot of these podcasts because me being in the position that I'm in I know when people invite me a lot of times they think I won't show up but guess what Cats did it for me. Right, you're when I brought right. up Isaiah right. and others mm. and they did it for me and the least I can do is do my part to help and to let the world know you see these brothers out here doing this stuff I support them mm. you know my style is different from other people I'm a product of corporate America who's venturing out on my own but one of the things y'all gotta remember to give yourselves credit for and I'm not talking about just y'all but so many others who are doing this see the athletes are different you had your money and then you did it mm -hmm. I'm different because I had ESPN and my my career at Fox and right. the newspaper business, all this stuff before I did it. You got a whole bunch of cats that bet on themselves mm -hmm. and go out there and did it. And what I'm saying is there's a level of courage mm -hmm. that you show this belief in yourself that you could do what you're supposed to be doing. And as a result of that, never forget that because there's a lot of people who got a lot of ability but don't have courage. Mm -hmm. And you are looking at one of them who spent years not having courage. I was raised by a mom that punched the clock yep. as a registered nurse and believed in putting your head down and going to work, coming home and all that other stuff. It wasn't until later on in my life, in my mid 40s and stuff like that, that I had an entrepreneurial spirit. But it still took me a while to get to that point because I was an employee and they got you under contract and they can right. restrict your rights and all of this other stuff. Because of y'all, people like y'all, mm -hmm. people like me, even in my 50s, are gaining more courage than I ever had wow. in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it ain't resent. 
It's gratefulness, it's gratitude that I feel for y'all, that I feel for so many people in this space that's doing so much of what y'all doing. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to strive to get mine. But I'll be damned if I'm not going to help at every opportunity to help others along the way get theirs. And y'all are two of those people. This team yep. are definitely Thank so. You, anytime y'all want me on, I'm happy Thank to come back on. It's not a question. It's not a question. You said something that was one of the most prolific things I ever heard. You said, sometimes all of us don't got to be equal. Right. We are only promised. We are only for opportunity. Deserving of equal opportunity. Deserving of equal opportunity. Yes. That shit blew my mind. It's the truth. And most of us do have the same equal opportunities we don't capitalize off. We don't deserve the same equal results. Mm, right. You, you, all of us work with people, work for people, or have people under us who either work better and produce more or work worse and produce less. Right. People who produce less and don't work as hard as me don't deserve what I deserve. Okay? You know, everybody that's poor don't deserve to be poor. But some of them do. Everybody that's rich don't deserve to be rich. rich right? But some people don't deserve to be rich. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's the way it is. And when you accept that, what you do is attach a level of accountability to those that are trying to make things happen. Are you really trying to make it happen? Are you really exhausting yourself doing all that you need to do in order to achieve what you're after? If you're doing all of that, God bless you. More power to you. What help do you need? If you're a lazy ass person, don't come in my it. direction. Right. I got no use for you. I got family members who lazy as hell. They ain't employed by me. <laughs> The people who are employed by me are people that I know are going to work. Right. And by the way, if I see them and they being lazy, they're going to get fired. Right. Period. God damn. It's about production. It's about getting the job done. Because if they don't get the job done, they inhibit your ability to get the job done. And you're the one that's going to suffer. Right. You do not let somebody bring you down. You can't bring everybody with you. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Some people, you got to leave their ass home. Look at them. Thank you. Supplement them. All right, I'm going to look out for you a little bit, try to give you an edge up. Here you go. And inspire them but, as much as you can. But you can't roll right. with me because if I believe I'm here and I believe this is what is required, I can't have you here. Especially You're going to bring me down. Yep. I got to go, fellas. Thank you. Let's do a 15 <laughs>